Good evening and welcome to Leanne Field in Eden, Ohio, as we get set to bring you the halfway point of the regular season, week number five. And tonight, a terrific matchup on paper, a game that was born out of the COVID-19 pandemic back in 2021. Both teams were trying to find a game. They elected to play each other. They have played another time since then. So this will be the third meeting between Eden and Whiteford, Michigan. The Bobcats come in with a terrific pedigree that we're going to dive into more as the pregame show rolls on. And that pregame show is being presented to you tonight by Allied Molded Products. Think inside the box at Allied Molded Products. As always, glad to have my terrific hey. friend and former head coach of the Hilltop Cadets, Michael Bum, with me here this evening. And Foz, uh, one of those matchups, as we said, that... Uh, you never would have put together a few years ago, but then because of necessity, they are starting to play each other a little bit more, and it's been, uh, at least that 2021 game was a terrific matchup. Last year was one-sided, but Whiteford, Michigan, is the real deal in southern Michigan. This is a really good football program against an undefeated uh, Eaton team coming into tonight. Uh, this is a game that you and I have had circled on our calendars when we made out the schedule at the beginning of the year, or I should say you made out the schedule at the beginning of the year, and we thought Eaton was going to have a special team. So far, they have not disappointed. As you said, Andy, Whiteford is always a perennial powerhouse, and we, we're going to get into that as we get going, but this is a very, very good small school athletic program great school system uh so we think this is going to be a really really good football game tonight and, you know if you look ahead at eden's schedule you know this may be the one team that could get it and you know, again we'll see what happens tonight but on paper it's going to be a very competitive matchup and uh and we'll see two different styles of football too any one team that's predominantly a run team and of course eden bombers under bob owen and his what is it 45th year now 46 46 year now is going to be putting the ball up and throwing the ball every down. So we're going to have a contrast in styles. It'll be interesting to see, you know, a lot of times teams that defend the pass don't defend the run very well on the other side of the ball. And conversely, a lot of times the teams that were, are run dominated maybe aren't so good in pass coverage. So it's going to be interesting to see that dynamic as it goes forward. Whiteford has three losses in the last three years. One of them this year in the regular season. They come in two and one. The other two losses state championship games now they also have a pair of state titles within the last decade as well and oh by the way a couple of local northwest ohio connections they're coached by evergreen grad former evergreen coach todd teakin and the superintendent there is a good friend of ours you know, we dominated Industrial League basketball back in the day with That's Brian right. Grad, Scotty Heward, and I reached out and talked to Scott a couple of different times this week, and he texted me today and wanted to know a little how to get this game. I'm going to let the Whiteford fans know that we were bringing it to folks across the area and across the globe tonight. So uh, just a little bit more of a local flavor to talk about. Also, two really good quarterbacks. Oh, boy. Tyler Sapp, the senior, the experienced guy, and then Trey Eitner, who is, uh, broke records last year at Whiteford as a freshman starter, now in his sophomore season. They go about it a little differently, but they are really dynamically talented quarterbacks. Yeah, you're going to see more play-action game uh, from Trey Eitner, but... but well, with uh, Sap, it's just going to be more of the conventional shotgun, run and shoot style of offense. So, that that will be the contrast there. You look at the roster here with the Bobcats. Although two and one right now, loss was only to a bigger school, Ida. Boy, they're young. Mm -hmm. You got a sophomore and their leading rusher, and and uh, Breck Reddy. Then you've got the quarterback and Trey Eitner. I mean, that's <laughs> they got a lot of firepower. Not only this year, Andy, but coming back in the in the future. Going to step aside here on the pregame show, brought to you tonight and every night by Allied Molded Products. Think inside the box at Allied Molded Products. We'll take that short break. Our Brian Ford Lincoln conversation with the head coaches when we come back. Bob Olwyn of Eden and Todd Teakin from Whiteford. When we return. Have you considered building a new home but struggling to find the perfect piece of land? If so, give Misty King of Amerimade Realty a call and ask for details about the land for sale on South Main Street in Bryan. Misty just listed this 100 foot by 145 foot lot located on the south edge of town just north of Fountain Grove Drive. It's conveniently located close to shopping, dining, and the school campus. Listed for only $28,000, this land is priced to be the perfect spot for your new home. So call Misty King at 419-633-4997. That's 419-633-4997. Or visit AmeriMadeHomes.com for more details. 
Attention business owners, this is Dean Day with Andrews O'Neill and Lowe Insurance Agency. At Andrews O'Neill and Lowe, we understand the unique challenge that you face. That's why we offer comprehensive commercial insurance solutions tailored to your needs. With our trusted partner, Auto Owners Insurance, you get top tier coverage that protects every aspect of your business, from liability to property and everything in between. Auto Owners Insurance has you covered. Trust Andrews O'Neill and Lowe to safeguard your business. Visit andrewsoneillandlowe.com or call to to learn more about our commercial insurance offerings. We're here to help your business thrive. And we welcome you back to the pregame show. It's time now for our conversation with the coach presented by Brian Ford Lincoln. And we are touching base with uh, Eden frontman uh, Bob Olwyn. And well, Bob, uh, four games in, four wins, uh, nice start to the season. Overall, have you been happy with what you've seen from the kids on the field? I think we've really improved, uh, especially on the defensive side. We've been opportunistic uh, offensively, and special teams-wise, we're better than we were last year. So, uh, overall, yes. X's and O's wise, Bob, on the defensive side specifically, what have the biggest adjustment or changes, improvements that you have seen with this group? I think they're getting off their blocks faster. Uh, we're just quicker overall. Um, we put some kids on the defensive side that can really, uh, for us, can really run. Uh, for other people, maybe not. But but uh, they've done a nice job, and, and we're swarming to the ball. Um, we, we usually have four or five kids to the ball each play, and we're, we're trying to get more, but um, we're consistently doing that. Um, so, and we've caused turnovers. Uh, I think uh, we had several turnovers in each game. Um, so, uh, at least two, if not more, um, in every game we've played. On the other side of things, offensively, have you been happy with the progression on that side? <laughs> yes and no. I'm never happy offensively. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think our line has improved uh, quite a bit. Um, and, you know, when you have a three-year starter at quarterback that, that, and a good athlete, that really helps. Uh, we been a little uh, injury prone um, with some of those kids receiver wise and running back so I don't think they're in the, the best shape um, that they can be in but we're starting to get that way and um, it's not just one kid for us that you have to defend uh, we, all our receivers have caught touchdown um, Running backs ran the ball uh, well. Um, Kyler's ran the ball well. So um, we've been able to hit hit you with a lot of different um, plays. And like I said, you know, you got a signal caller three years, but we also have receivers that have played three years and um, with him. And... Um, they do a really nice job, and, and we can run quite a few of our plays and um, be consistent with it. And we're catching the ball pretty well. Um, we have uh, some spots in the games where we don't, but uh, once we get it rolling, um, these guys are pretty hard to stop. All right, next up for your squad, uh, home game Friday, Whiteford, Michigan. Tell me what you know about them. Well, they have a real good tradition. Uh, Todd Teakin used to be at Evergreens, their coach. Uh, he's been there in a few years. Uh, they been to the state finals in Michigan uh, probably about four years in a row. They, they won at one time. Um, we played them in 21 and at our place and beat them. And then last year they beat us. So they have some really fine athletes. It looks like they're bigger than us and um, they're pretty, pretty stinking aggressive. They have a good, good punter, good kicker. Um, 
quarterback was a freshman last year, I think, and started some games for him. Uh, he looks like a good athlete. Their backs run extremely hard. Their line does a good job of blocking. They're, it's a, two contrasting styles. They want 10 feet three times, and they don't throw it uh, very well or uh, very much. So if you get pressure on the quarterback, he'll throw it up to us, and, you know, that, that'd be great. But they're going to run the ball and, and run it and run it and run it. They give you quite a few formations. Um, they're unbalanced formations. It's a T wing T uh, type of offense. Defensively, they're in a four man front, two uh, real aggressive linebackers. Secondary, the corners are up in our face. Uh, the secondary, the rest of the kids play a little bit off. But they'll put four defenders to our three-man side and three defenders to our two-man side and try to get pressure with the other four that's in the box. Well, that's pretty thorough, Bob. We appreciate that. It's our Brian Ford-Lincoln conversation with the coach as we talk with feed and head coach uh, Bob Owen. Bob, always appreciate the time. Enjoy the conversations. Good luck Friday night. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. Stay with us. More on the pregame show when we come back. Always supporting student athletes and coaches in the Eden School District, the Eden Athletic Boosters. The Eden Athletic Boosters would like to take this opportunity to salute the student athletes and coaches in tonight's game. Hey, how would you like to be a part of the Eden Athletic Boosters? Come to a meeting and find out what they're all about. Maybe even volunteer at a concession stand. For more information, phone 419-272-3213. The Eden Athletic Boosters, supporting student athletes and coaches in Eden. Are you in the market for high quality appliances and furniture? Look no further than DirectLink Appliance and Furniture. We have a wide selection of Whirlpool Maytag and KitchenAid appliances as well as service on all makes and models. DirectLink also carries Ashley Furniture and Jameson mattresses. And new to the store, Molecule mattresses made right in Auburn, Indiana. Don't miss out on unbeatable prices and top-notch service on everything you need to turn your house into a home. Visit DirectLink Appliance and Furniture in Bryan today. We continue on with our pregame show and our conversation with the coach presented by Brian Ford Lincoln and we are touching base with Whiteford uh, head coach Todd Teakin and well Todd three games in the books for you heading into this one uh, as you look back at the start of the season overall have you been happy with what you've gotten from the kids uh yeah 100 percent I mean obviously um you know, we had that hiccup uh, there in week two um but you know the team that we played we knew was probably going to be the one of the tougher teams on our schedule um this year, uh, we have a very, very young football team compared to where we've been the last few years. Um, you know, we have anywhere from 16 to 17 new starters on, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, but I will say this, that um, the, the work ethic and the um, just uh, continuing the type of culture that we've had, um, that we've been fortunate enough to have here at Whiteford, um, this group of kids is running with that, um, you know, not changing that way. It was just, you know, we have some, some growing pains with, you know, such a young team and stuff like that, but um, just, just really happy with uh, all the way around the way our kids are, are playing football. Um, you know, they had a great first week against a, you know, very veteran team. We just came out and played lights out really in all three phases of the game. Um, week two played really good, just, you know, really three plays made crucial mistakes on three plays uh, and it was a difference in the game and the you know the team we played was obviously like I said very good very veteran um you know and, and it was uh things uh you know early in the season uh, learning experience uh, you know losing the game not the worst thing in the world and uh you know but gave us a lot of things to to grow from and and then last week played just great again again played a very veteran team you know had a three-hour bus ride um got up on the team real early but then they got back into the game uh, late right before half and you know honestly that was I, I think that was a defining moment for our kids to where you know they, they could have folded a little bit at halftime with just some of the adversity that they had had all day you know with a long bus ride and then you know a team that got back into the game and you know probably had started to have some doubts and came out in the second half and just played great. 
you know, Todd, as you look at things on the field, uh, offense, defense, special teams, what do you feel are the strengths with this group? Maybe things that you've liked that you've seen uh, three games in. Yeah, um, I think our strengths, uh, first of all, start with our you know, our quarterback, uh, Trey Eitner. Um, even though he's only a sophomore, um, you know, he started all 14 games for us last year as a freshman that, you know, went to the uh, loss in the state championship last year. Um you know, so that's been, and he's he's really matured. Uh, just a you know totally different kid uh, from a from a year ago. Um, our offensive line, um, you know, that's probably the one area where we do have you know have some kids back and have some experience on, and 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 then the kids that have filled in have been have just done a great job. Um, you know, we're running the ball for probably over 300 yards plus a game, and you know, which is what you know philosophy of our our system is, and uh, so really happy there. Um, and you know, so that I, I'd say that's the strength of our football team. Um, you know, our our defense has been has been really good. It's just you know we've a couple times in in the wrong time uh, given up some big plays and stuff like that. But I mean, our our kids are aggressive. I mean, they really you know they really get after it. Uh, you know, they're they're going to hit you. I know that. I mean, we might make a mistake here or there, but those kids are going to hit you. All right, next up, a uh, road trip for you. Another good opponent in Eden. Uh, tell me what you know about them. Um, not, not a good opponent, a great opponent. Um, they are, um, you know, they're solid uh, in in all all three phases of the game. Um, you know, when I look at them from a year ago, they're um, so much improved on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, from, from where they were a year ago. Um Obviously, offensively, they got you know they got a, a great quarterback and five really good skilled receivers uh, that can probably score on about any play. Um, you know their their offensive line. I think they got four or five starters back there. Um, you know, so very veteran team. Uh, you know, Bob does such a great job with that offense, and um, you know he's been he's been running it forever, and uh, you know so. Um, just, just all the way around. I mean, they're they're a complete football team. I, you know, I think it's probably best team they've had in a long time. And uh, um, you know, so you know, we certainly have our challenge and uh, challenge for us coming this Friday night. Todd, how important is it uh, to get off to a good start in the game, and maybe not even just the game, but like starting out the first half, the second half with a little success, have some success early? Uh, how important is that sort of thing, especially when you're on the road? Um, well, I think it's crucial. I think it's, you know, when, when you look at that, it's crucial from, you know, three different aspects. One, like you said, we're on the road. Two, we're going up against a very, very good football team. And then, you know, three, you know, just because of our youth. So having having success early and having things that maybe um, maybe don't put some doubt in the in the minds of our kids as, as they're going through that game that, you know, makes them – you know, realize that they can they can play with the team that they're with on the field uh, is, is definitely very very big to what we need to do. So our Brian Ford Lincoln conversation with the coach talking with Whiteford uh, frontman Todd Teakin. Todd, we appreciate the time. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, best of luck Friday night. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all you do for high school football. Stay with us. More on the pregame show when we come back. Camco Industries, with facilities located in West Unity, Ohio, and Marincy, Michigan, has openings on all three shifts for production and assembly operators. We manufacture interior plastic products for the automotive industry. As an operator, you will be required to visually inspect, trim, assemble, and pack parts, as well as label containers. You must be able to pass an entry-level test and a substance abuse test. Camco also has openings for shipping associates, material handlers, and production leads. Camco offers a complete benefit package. If you would like to join our team, please complete an application online at www.kumi-na.com or in person at Camco, 1001 East Jackson Street, West Unity, Ohio, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. All rehires will be considered for employment. You work hard for your money. That's why we see to it that your money works hard for you, not someone else. At Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, our earnings belong to our members and go right back to work for you, from better rates to lower fees. We've got the products and people to help you build a more fantastic future every step of the way. Join 14,000 other people just like you who want to do more with their money. Imagine a different possibility at Midwest Community Federal Credit Union. 
Welcome back out here to Leanne Field in Eden, Ohio. Uh, a couple hours ago, we had uh, uh, something that we haven't had in a while. Rain moved through our area, but I think we're in a pretty good spot right now in terms of being past that rain uh, for this evening. It is an overcast night, maybe a little splash of rain still possible, and maybe later tonight, but all things considered, we need so much. It, had, it has to rain for a full day for it to really soak in, so it's not going to play any kind of a factor, I don't think, here tonight. You have a couple of factors, though. Let's start with Eden. How do they win this game at home tonight and stay perfect on the season? Well, let me preface this, Ange, by saying I think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. Well, as you know, I've been wrong a time or two. With that said, I think Eden's going to have to be a little bit more physical up front, put more people in the box. That does leave them susceptible to the play-action pass. Trey Eitner is cons considered one of the best at doing that, only a sophomore for Whiteford, but he's highly skilled. Dad's a coach, an assistant coach. And was a heck of a thing, quarterback and a heck of a quarterback at Swan and at Toledo and played a little bit of semi or pro, pro ball. Uh, but Eden's going to have to collectively stop the run and get Whiteford into second and third down situations where they can't use the play action pass and put them in obvious passing situations now like anything we could always say every single week it's going to be turnover so i'll leave that on the shelf that's going to be huge though eden's got to stop the run especially on those early downs how about whiteford tonight to get a, a big one on the road listen color sap is legit he's the best player on the field again i believe tonight um, and you're going to have to somehow contain him. I don't think you have to get sacks against Kyler Sapp. Keep him in the po in the pocket. Drop enough people where that you can get some deflections or maybe a turnover or two because Eden's going to throw the ball 95% of the time. But where Kyler also hurts people is, and I think conventional wisdom is, is put pressure on the quarterback, put pressure on the quarterback. And then that leaves Kyler Sapp open to some running lanes and be able to use his legs, and that hurts just as much as a long passing play. Hold that thought as we keep it right here for the National Anthem. Other thoughts to finish? Yeah. Well, I just want to come back to that. And again, I think a lot of times the fans and even some coaches make a mistake of wanting to put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. You get a running quarterback and he gets out of the pocket. You remember, if you blitz somebody and you miss, you're leaving yourself susceptible to big plays, big chunk plays in the running game. So I think it's more important, at least in my opinion here, is to keep Sap within the pocket, meaning rush your ends wide and drop a lot of people in coverage, taking away his ability to run the ball and then putting enough people in coverage that you can make plays. Ultimately, you got to make plays in space. That means on the ball and that means making tackles. Yeah. Third meeting, as we said, overall, they started this series back in 2021. Eden won that one in a shootout, 52-32. to Whiteford won last year, rolling to a 58-18 win. Todd Teakin in his third year, 29-3 and as a head coach, with two of those losses coming in state championship games. They are ranked number three in Division 7 by CalPreps.com. Uh, Eden is ranked number 21, and this is Max Preps, but Eden is number seven in the state in the latest eight people uh they have a an enrollment of 268 whiteford does and we mentioned that number because eden's enrollment is 121 so they are a bigger school also i don't know if you knew this this is the final year of their conference the tri-county conference will be no more too many of their schools are going to eight-man football and so they and in con conversely they have a lot of road games that they're playing this season six of their nine are road games so you know you think about that and what that 
the, the kind of pressure it can put on an athletic department when you only have three home games and you're traveling and it's the sign of the times. It's huge. It's huge because not only are you asking your kids from a financial standpoint, nonetheless, I'll just take that off the table, but you're asking your aunt. Last week they played Buchanan. That was a three-hour trip for them. This week they play Eden. That's a 75 mile, so that's an hour and what? Hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes by bus that, you're, that they're going on. That's tough. Now, you say high school stadiums don't have the huge crowds that you would in college. You're still investing a lot of time. It's still a time suck when you've got to be on that road. You've got to be getting ready to load up and all of that where the other team's kind of comfortable and going through their plays and going through their routines. You lose a few hours in all sure of that. Do. That's a big deal. And uh, you start to see that wear on you after a week or two of consecutive road games. This is the, we'll see if that plays into it. This Good is point. their second long trip tonight. Whiteford's, that is. Wins over Blissford, uh, Blissfield 35-6 in Buchanan, 44-16. Blissfield was a home game, and they lost to Ida, as Mike mentioned, 21-6. Eden has had uh, four games. Their starters have played one complete game. That was Edgerton in the opening week. They won 36-26. They beat Antwerp 55-6, Hicksville 48-8, Margareta 41-7. You want a little more info on Whiteford football? D8 state champions in 2017 and 2022 up in Michigan and state runners up in 2016 and last year in 2023. Tech may not be a bad place for Whiteford if they have a lot of their teams going to eight-man football. Tech is always looking for teams and it's on life support as it is. Yeah. Who knows? Bob Olwen in his 46th season, sitting at 245 wins. Eden an offense that's scoring 45 a game. And I think their defense is where they've made the biggest jump in the first month of this season. We'll see if they can sustain it throughout the rest of the year. There'll be a big challenge here for them tonight. They're giving up just 12 points per game on Outside the season. Outside of the first week of the season, the first half against Edgerton, their defense has been lights out. The first half against Edgerton, they got pushed around. Don't know if it was adjustments or kids just playing harder or what the situation was, but right now Eden's playing very good defense. That has been the pregame show brought to you tonight by Allied Molded Products. Think inside the box at Allied Molded Products. 4-0 Eden, 2-1 and Whiteford for a third time in their history. Thanks for being with us here tonight. We're at the midway point of the high school football season here in the state of Ohio. Whiteford is going to kick it away to Eden. Caden Stance will be the deep man. It's getting teed up right now. As we said, the uh, skies have cleared somewhat. Trey Eitner, the 5'11 quarterback slash kicker, has it teed up now. So that Eden offense about ready to get their hands on it for a first time here tonight. The run up, the kick, and off we go. It's end over end. It's short. It bounces at the 25 and skids out of bounds. So Eden will be a terrific field position here to start this game. So we said it's a contrast of styles. Eden going to go five wide and throw the ball every down. Lightford, on the other hand, when they have the ball, double wing T look, power down blocking what I like to call pin and pull your offensive lineman block down and you pull somebody around and you hand the ball to a big back Kyler Sapp terrific senior season thus far the biggest number to even talk about the number is one one pick on the season that's where he's made his biggest leap this year five wide look three to the left two receivers to the right Sapp under some pressure steps away from initial trouble throws over the middle and it's incomplete the intended target was Kendall Briggle pretty good coverage that time from Trent Neitner Great coverage, only three rushers that time by Whiteford. If they can get pressure with three down linemen, Eden's going to be in for a long night. Second down and ten. Eden moving right to left as you listen in here to this one. And there are the three down linemen. Eden talking with uh, Bobble when they thought they might see this and maybe even see some times where they rush 2-1 or nobody. But it's a three-man rush. Sap to throw an out route. Pass is caught by Briggle at the 45-yard line. Steps out of bounds. He's shoved out of bounds by Brody Hiller to 5'9 junior. It's a pickup of 10. The sticks move and a first down for Eden. Kendall Briggle's been one of the main targets for Kyler Sap this year. Ray to ball, Briggle, the top two receivers in terms of catches and yardage for this high-octane Eden offense. Trips to the right, twins to the left, empty backfield on first down and 10 at their own 45. Hash mark to the near side. Sap with a quick slant. Pass is caught by Holbert at midfield. He will be buried there by Andy Trejo and company. 
Trejo along with Nolan Walker. It's a gain of five, and it'll be second down and five. Part of Bob Owen's M.O. has always been that first half. He'll dink and dunk you to death, try to feel you out, feel what the defense is doing. In the second half, he usually opens it up a little bit more. Second and five, Eaton at midfield. Not quite a minute into this game. Obviously a scoreless game. Five wide again. Eaton hurrying it up with tempo. Uh, on that out route, sap through it low and away for Briggle incomplete. Brody Hillard had coverage there. So now it'll be the first third down Eden stares at tonight a third and five at the 50. I think this is probably knowing Bob Owen we're right at the 50 yard line four down territory would not be surprised to see some kind of quarterback draw with Sap. remember Whiteford's only rushing three playing a lot of zone behind him third and five there are the three down linemen so eight dropping in coverage at least by look and maybe more and they jumped across and I think Sap's hard count just stole a first down for Eden if it's truly five yards, it's going to be enough, and it will for an Eden's second first down of the night. It moves it into Whiteford territory at the 45-yard line. Good discipline. They call that holding your water if you're an offensive lineman. Kyler Sapp had a hard count. Whiteford took the bait. By the way, Eden comes in. First, official computer points are out. Eden is number two in Division 7, Region 26. We'll get into that maybe at intermission. Three receivers bunched to the right, one to the left, one running back is Halbert. Sap to throw, has time. Steps up, may run. Tucks it, 45-40. Slides in at the 36-yard line. Counted off at nine on the run. It'll be second and one. Andy Trejo there for the Bobcats. We talked about that in the pregame. Again, the ability of Kyler Sap to run. Not designed running plays, but just when there's nothing in the in the uh, in the secondary there, he just decides to tuck it and take off and gets himself about nine yards on that carry. We'll call it eight because it is second and two at the 37. First drive of the game, Eden and Whiteford, no score on the Andrews O'Neill and Low scoreboard. Two by two look with uh, Holbert going in motion to the far side. Sap has a crosser and hits him wide open. 35, 30, 25, shoved out of bounds as Eli Dickman at the 27. He'll get 10. And it'll be the Bombers' third first down of this opening drive. Three completions for Kyler Sapp to three different wide receivers. It'll be first and 10, Eden, at the 25-yard line. Bombers got something humming here on this first drive of the game. 10.20 to go in the quarter. Week five, Eden and Whiteford. They're going to be a two-receiver look to the left and to the right, it looks like. And now it'll be three to the right side and empty the backfield as Holbert will go out there into the slot on the right side. First and 10 at the 25. Sap under a little more pressure this time. Steps up, runs into the arms of a tackler, but does struggle forward. Gave Spiewike, a 5'10", 165 junior, gets it back to the line. Of, actually, it'll be a loss of one. Beg your pardon on the play. So it's the 26-yard line. Thought maybe Sap had been able to get positive yardage there, but it'll be second and 11 at the 26. The best offensive lineman for the Eden Bombers is Parker Kelly, the left tackle. The best rush in for uh, Whiteford is number 71, uh, Nolan Walker. It'll be interesting to see how those two battle the whole game. Second down and 11, an empty backfield. Trips to the right, twins to the left on second down and 11. Sap throws, little hook, hitch route, passes, caught over the right side. Colton Willis spins inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Needed 11, going to get 12, and it'll be a first down for Eden, and the drive moves on. Sap has completed four balls now to four different wide receivers. Coach Bob Owen spreading around. This will be the ninth play of the Eden drive to start this thing. First and 10, Eden at the 15-yard line. Three receivers come left. Two receivers going to go to the right side of the formation. And again, an empty backfield. Three down linemen for Whiteford, dropping eight on this drive consistently. The snap on first and ten. Sap with some time. Floats one towards the front corner of the end zone. It's incomplete. It was broken up last minute by Brody Hillard. It was in the hands, though, of Max Radeball. Yeah, I think that was Breck Ruddy who actually broke it up, Andy. A little flag route in the back of the end zone. Sap put it right on the money to Max Radeball. was in his hands, but credit number 22, Breck Radeball, for knocking it away at the last second. Sap coming into this with uh, 1,061 yards, 17 touchdowns, one INT thrown on the season. Almost had number 18 there. Clock stops at 9.01. Scoreless game, second and 10, Eden at the Whiteford 15. Two receivers left, two receivers to the right. 
Holbert, the left halfback, on second down and 10. Sat, looks, looks, plenty of time. Now flush to the near side, 20, 15, tucks and runs, 10. Got a block, 5, out of bounds. It'll be a first down, or is he going to step out before the first down? Nope, he's inside the 5 at the 3. It'll be first and goal after the 12-yard run. Great job by the Eden offensive line. Sapp had plenty of time again. Whiteford's only rushing three, but that's the discipline with Kyler Sapp. If there's nothing there, don't force it. If they're going to drop eight people into coverage, just tuck it and run and use your athleticism. So first in goal, Eden at the Whiteford three-yard line. Game's opening possession. Play number 11 of this drive. Two-by-two two look with Holbert now going in motion to the near side. Sap quarterback draw runs right into the arms that time of the linebacker, Trenton Eitner, the six-foot sophomore, or senior, I beg your pardon, who is a cousin to quarterback Trey, makes the stop, and it's a loss on the play. And now we get a penalty coming against Eden. I think the play was going to be dead, and they called a legal procedure there, Okay. Andy. You know, it's almost as if Bob Owen is playing a video game here, Andy. He's picked out somebody different every time. That last incompletion was the rate of ball in the end zone. He's the only one that hadn't touched the ball yet. Five different wide receivers have been targeted on this first drive. It's a first and goal at the eight-yard line now after the fall start. Trips to the right twins to the left the two receivers set to the short side of the field sap with a quick screen far side pass is caught willis willis is not gonna get anywhere great open field tackle drew ruddy the 5'7 junior stymied them at the point of the tack so it will be second and goal now at about the eight yard line it's a little tougher for throwing teams in the red zone because there's so many bodies condensed and the passing lanes just aren't there anymore eden usually likes to use cohen holbert a big back kind of an h back running back in these situations we'll see if he gets a touch second and goal at the eight two receivers both ways holbert comes in motion to the near side low snap sap has it throws in the flat pass caught nope it's dropped by holbert beg your pardon yeah. may have heard some footsteps coming from brody hillard who's been active on this first drive just took his hands off at that for a moment there and wouldn't have gotten in but would have had a positive gain on that situation so it's third down and eight Eden does have a kicking game here but I think knowing Bob Owen Angie will we seen him enough yeah. this is probably four down territory I would agree. third and goal at the eight yard line 727 to go on the game's first drive in this first quarter two receivers both ways make it three receivers to the left beg your pardon out of the slot in motion goes Holbert on this third and goal at the eight He'll stop and come back to the near side. Sap, pump, sap, flush to the right, being chased. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, he's in the end zone. Touchdown! Eden draws first blood on the scramble play by Kyler Sap off the right side. It's an 8-yard scorer, and Eden with a 6-0 lead. Great decision, and he made it decisively. Four carries, all undesigned runs by Kyler Sap. 29 yards on the ground, one touchdown pass. Again, if 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 Whiteford's going to drop eight people into coverage, that's going to give him some opportunities to run the football, him being Kyler Sapp. Kendall Briggle to hold for Sapp's extra point attempt now. Snap is low. It's down. The kick on the way. The kick is punched up and through and good. First score of the night belongs to Eden on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. 7.18 to go in the quarter. 7-0 Eden on B-Rock Sports. Just three words tell you everything you need to know. They tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach. And why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans. Not everyone can say that, but we can. Made in America. Real steel. Find yours. See Black Swamp Equipment in Bryan, Archbold, and Defiance. Quick score in uh, a game going on over on Q96.5. Patrick Henry on Brian's homecoming night. The Patriots up 6-0. And Shawnee strikes on Defiance 8-0 here. A 13-play drive, 65 yards, capped off by the SAP 8-yard TD run. And it's 7-0, Eden. And you said it just as succinct as you could in that break. Impressive drive. 6 for 10 passing in the first drive by SAP. Four different wide receivers he connected on. 46 yards in the air. 
Sapp was 29 yards on the ground. I thought it was an outstanding job of pass protecting. Again, Whitebird's only rushing three, so it's a little bit easier of a task by the Eden offensive line. But Kyler Sapp's legit, and those wide receivers catch balls. And now Sapp with the kickoff going deep. The run-up and the catch made by Antonio Noctrob. Noctrob at the 20-25, looking for room off that far side and is going to be stood up by a wall of Eden Bombers. Among them there, Gage Nestor for Eden. Forward progress will be the 23, and that's where they'll put it in play for Trey Eitner and this offense. Yeah, the tackle was up a little bit high, and Coach Teakin wanted some kind of a penalty on that. I do not think it was a horse collar. I think it was probably, although it looks ugly, Andy, and you, and you don't want to teach it or you don't want to coach it that way or see it, it's still not a it's still not a penalty when it's up around the neck area, unless it's from behind. Wasi on seven, Evergreen nothing in the NWOAL. First and ten, and actually it'll be the 25-yard line is where this will be put into play. Adnire will have wingbacks on either side of him. And then Drew Ruddy will be lined up in the backfield. A little confusion here on putting this in, oh, maybe getting a maybe a dry ball in play. I didn't think yeah. it was all that wet out here, but maybe, maybe. And Eden has used that to opportunity to sub a couple of different kids in on this first snap. Eden will go four down linemen. Under quarter or under center is Trey Eitner. Eitner on the counter give coming back to the right side from one of those wing backs. Not much running room. Eden bottling up Breck Ruddy, who is that sophomore and the leading rusher. He is going to be tackled immediately that time. Carter Stanky among those there to make the stop. Get a lot of bodies in that box area. The wing tee is built on leads and counters and traps and you want to have a lot of humanity at the point of attack if you're Eden. Second down and eight with a double wing look and a late substitution coming in. Counter back to the other way. Trent Knight now big hole. Look out. 40, 50. Briggle's the only one that can catch him. He misses the tackle. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown Whiteford. Second snap 73 yards in the score Trent Neitner stepped out of the only guy that could catch him Briggle missed on the tackle and they're an extra point away from tying it pin and pull blocking up front zero splits as you see a little counter action Eden was disorganized bringing one person onto the field at a late time there so they really only had 10 people on and Trent Neitner explodes through the middle Two plays, 75 yards, and now Eitner and the offense go for two. The quick snap. It's Breck Ruddy off the left side. Burrows his way in for the two-point conversion. And just like that, a 13-play dry erased in a flash. It's 8-7 Whiteford. All the people up in the press box, the radio people at least, thought this was going to be a very high-scoring game, and we're only six minutes into the first quarter, and we've seen that so far. So if you're out there listening, Call your friends, text your friends, tell them to get on and listen to this game. It's going to be a shootout. Hey, by the way, it's a good segue to me because we do have some new listeners. A shout-out to my our, my wife's family, our family, and a Colorado family locked in tonight to us, Foz. Bring them on. We love them. Who are they? Um, they are Aunt Cindy and yeah. Uncle Tim are, are tuned in tonight for sure. Well, we love them. We know Chip and Walter listening, obviously. Hey, I also got a fan of ours. Her name is Susan Roby. Okay. She listens to us. She's from Marchmont, Ohio. She loves the Ange and she loves the Foz. She loves WBNO, even though she doesn't follow any of the teams usually that we cover. So shout out to it's, her. It's nothing but love on this Friday night, isn't it, Foz? I mean, come on now. You just threw out a whole bunch of love. How about Todd Teakin's record at Whiteford? Twenty-nine and three. Are you kidding me? Two of those losses, you say, in state championships? Two losses. Oh my goodness. Yep. Two losses in state titles. That's not bad, is it? That's that isn't too bad. <laughs> it almost it kind of mirrors the Foz's coaching. Uh, yeah, well, record. we won a lot of games, you but did. not that many games. You did successful <laughs> tenure for Mike Bowman. Thank, you, thank you. You know what? You did what every coach wants to do. You left the program better than you found it, my friend. Trey Eitner with the kick and another one going to say a lot of bounds. Either this is perhaps yeah. by a little design I or. Don't know. 
Uh, well, listen. if they see something on film, maybe that stance is, uh, you know, gives them some problems. So uh, they're not even giving them a chance. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, listen, who are we to question? Uh, one, Bob Owen, who's coached 46 years and had an immaculate record, or Todd Teakin with a 29 and three record with two of those losses being in state championship games. But uh, not so sure. I'm a fan of kicking it out of bounds every time. Well, we'll see. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just poor kicks each time. But either way, Eaton's going to take over and get a great start again at their own 35. In an 8-7 game, not quite halfway through this first quarter. You know, I mentioned the fact Bob Owen's M.O., method of operation, is always that first half, especially the first quarter, dink and dunk. Little 5- and 10-yard outs, nothing really serious. Until he kind of feels the defense out, that first series, 10 plays, Andy. One pass was deep, and the flag, it was a 15-yard pass. Everything else was under routes. Trips receivers to the left, twins to the right, empty backfield for Sapp. Three rushers again on first and 10. Sapp slings far side. Pass is going to be caught by Colton Willis. He'll bang his way across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. It's a gain of a dozen and a first down for Eden. Colton Willis' third catch already. For 25 yards. Tackled on the far side, Mason DeBar, a six foot, 170 pound junior, making the stop. Get you a couple of updates to, uh, rolling in to us. It is Wayne Trace leading Edgerton 6 0. Trace in search of their first win. Delta has a field goal and a 3 0 lead on Archville. PH now up 12 0. And Antwerp leads Hicksville 6 0. That PH lead is on Brian. Little curl route caught there in Ant or, uh, Whiteford territory is made here on the near side by Cohen Halbert. He will be spun down on the play by Andy Trejo, who gets his third tackle. It's a gain to the 48, pick up a five. It'll be second down and five. Whiteford's going to have to do something different. The soft zone and only rushing three right now. Kyler Seth's just picking them apart. Three receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Second down and five, eight, seven, Whiteford. Sap stepping away from trouble. Penalty flags are down. Sap's going to have a first down, but I think this is going to be all for naught as he gets to about the 27-yard line. <laughs> for now, it's a gain of 21, but that's going to be erased quickly on a holding penalty on Eden up front. And it was five yards in the backfield, so that's going to be from the point of the, point of the spot or point of the foul, excuse me. That's going to be a big loss for Eden. You have a 22-yard gain for Kyler Sapp. That's erased. You're five yards in the backfield plus another 10-yard penalty. So you're looking at, Andy, what's my math real quick there? That's about a 15-yarder plus 22. That's 37 yards of wasted yardage that you had with that penalty. So they'll spot it at their own 44. It will be officially second down and 13. Five and change to play opening quarter on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Whiteford with a quick strike with eight. Eden with a methodical drive with seven. Haven't seen any man-to-man -man defense for Whiteford here. It's been all loose zone. Trying to rally to the football, keep everything in front of you. We'll see if that switches a little bit because, as we said, Kyler Sapp's having his way. Cohen Halbert was going in motion. And then the officials are taking a timeout here. I think Todd Teakin and company are asking about that spot of the hold. They think it should be back farther. And I agree with him. I agree with him. Uh, I thought that was a gracious spot there by the officials. I think it should be dropped back a little bit farther. And now they're going to go over and let Todd Teakin know where they, in their estimation, the penalty, the holding penalty happened. Of course, Todd Teakin, former coach at Evergreen. Didn't quite have the success that he has at Whiteford, but a different location, different school, and relative speaking to the, to the competition that you're at. Evergreen, it's a tough, tough road to hoe in the NWAL. Whomever the coaches. They're going to leave it right there. So second and 13 for Eden at their own 44. Ball resting middle of the field. Two receivers to the left. Now three to the right. Back to throw is Sapp. One of that crosser underneath, not there. Now Sapp slings it downfield. It's incomplete. Kendall Briggle was trying to do the toe tap on the sideline and make the grab. Couldn't come up with it. And now it'll be third and long. Third and 13 for Eden back at their own 44-yard line. Delta 10, Archibald nothing late in the first quarter of that game in the NWOAL. So third and 13, Bombers at their own 44. Moving right to left, clock stop at 5-12. 8-7 Whiteford on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Andy Briggle, Mike Bum, glad you could be with us. Week five of high school football. We're at Leanne Field in Eden on a somewhat overcast night, although skies have 
Gotten a little blue here as the night's going on. Play action fake. Sap. Lots of time now. He's going to run out of it and just tries to get rid of it and does. And it will be an intentional grounding because nobody was in the neighborhood. Great pressure that time, Foz, with the three-man rush. Yeah, as you said, only with three-man rush. If you can get to Kyler Sapp with just a three-man rush, good things are going to happen. That's really the first time that they did with that. Give that a call that what we call a coverage sack. Good coverage in the secondary by the white for Bobcats. Nolan Walker and Mason DeBar were there. And now the loss of down on that penalty. It'll be fourth down in our first punt of the game coming up. It'll be Kyler Sapp. Eden 4 0, Whiteford 2 and 1. Now, the disparity is obviously Ohio now with the expanded playoffs starts a week earlier than Michigan. Zapp will be standing near his 12 yard line to punt this away. Drew Ruddy awaiting the kick. Sapp booms it away. It's a spiraling kick that Ruddy will field at the 32 and he drops it. Has to go back to the 29 and pick it up. He's at the 30. Now to the 35 near sideline. Steps out of bounds at about the 40 yard line. Was being chased by a couple of bombers. And uh, a good start here for the Whiteford drive on the second possession. Outstanding punt that time for Sapp. Also a really good return there by Ruddy. They'll put him at the 41 yard line, first down and 10. Foz and I will see Eden again next week. It's a Williams County collision, our first trip to Montpelier this year in Hobie Krause Field. Montpelier hosting Eden next Friday night on B Rock Sports. Two weeks from tonight, Foz, you'll get to play dad and be at Kent State. So go and enjoy yourself with Jesse and her last year. I'll be in Paulding for what should be a great GMC matchup, Edgerton at Paulding. Bulldogs got a shot. Somebody asked me before, can the Edgerton win the GMC? Yeah, they can. I, I still think they're an underdog to do it, but they got a chance. Double wing, double tight, one receiver, counter handoff. Ruddy runs into a stone wall. Parker Kelly got him first. That was Breck Ruddy, and it's no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard on the play. They do say no gain, so it'll be second down. I and think 10. Parker Kelly is going to have to have an outstanding game if Eden's going to win this. He's the best defensive and off offensive lineman for Eden. And, of course, we know it's just going to be heel-to-heel -heel splits from, from Whiteford, a lot of pulling and pinning, blocking, and you're going to just have to simply get a push up front and disrupt that pulling and pinning. 8-7 Whiteford, under, or about ready to hit the four-minute mark left in this first quarter. Split backfield, double, and then a wing on the left side and a toss sweep to Breck Ruddy. Ruddy got away from one, got away from a second, and then his submarine down at about the 46-yard line. He'll get five when he should have probably had nothing, and it'll be third and five. Good, strong run by Breck Ruddy. You see why he's the leading rusher with 312 yards and 48 attempts in only three games this year. So third and five, Whiteford at their own 46, hash mark far side of the field, moving left to right. Double wing, double tight, one running back look here. Drew Ruddy is the setback behind. It'll be Breck Ruddy on a play action. Eitner in the flat, pass is caught. It'll be a first down at the 40. Reception made by Trenton Eitner, who has the touchdown on the year, or on the uh, game tonight. He will pick up. 14 there, Foz, on the first throw of the night, and they move the sticks. It'll be first and 10, Whiteford at the Eden 40. Again, be physical at the point of attack, counter offense, and then all of a sudden play action. And right there that time, you get a lot of man-to-man -man and defensive secondary men looking in the backfield trying to stop that run. Again, double tight, double wing, one running back, and flags fly, stopping everything. It'll be a fall start, first penalty of the night on Whiteford, so it'll be a first and 15. Quick update, we had said Shawnee was up, that is not the case. It was Defiance, and now Defiance adds to the lead. They're up 14-0 on Lima Shawnee in the first half of that game. Here it's 8-7, Whiteford leading Eden. Three minutes and counting to play first quarter of football. Whiteford with a first and 15 at the Eaton 45-yard line as they go left to right here. Hash mark near side. Eitner under center. One receiver standing to the left. Double tight set. Play action. Eitner with time. Eitner sends it down the field. It's up for grabs, and the adjustment is made, and the catch is made by Mason DeBar. What a job. 
he was battling with Kyler Sapp and then ducked in front and under Kyler and then used the 6-4 frame to win the 50-50 ball and a gain of 23 in a first down. It was pretty well defended by Sapp, but you're right, Andy. Mason DeBar just went up and high-pointed it there and made a play, and you're exactly right. That's a 50-50 ball. Make that 29 on the pass play to the 17. First down and 10, Whiteford at the 17 of Eden, trying to add to their 8-7 lead. Double wing, double tight, one running back. Drew Ruddy is the setback behind. It'll be a jet sweep give off the left side. Trent Neitner, Eitner hurtling his way down inside the 10-yard line to about the 6-yard line. He's going to have at least, it looks like, 9, 10, 11. Oh. That's the far side, so we got to see where he went out of bounds. It's a gain of nine on the play to the eight-yard line. So second and one, Whiteford at the Eden eight. Three carries already for Trent Nightnire, 96 yards. Second and one at the eight. Hash mark far side, eight, seven, Whiteford. 2.13 to go in the opening quarter. Double wing set, double tight set, one running back. Trenton, or make that Trey Eitner under center. Bulls it straight ahead to Drew Ruddy. Powers his way down to the five. So Drew Ruddy getting three yards, and it'll be a first and goal for the Bobcats. First and goal at the five-yard line. We thought coming in, this is an offense for Whiteford. 70-30, 80-20 run pass, and they are very effective out of that 20 to 30% in the pass game because of how successful they are running the football with the play action. First and goal at the five. Play clock at ten. Another sweep to the left side. Trent Neitner, he is hammered in the backfield by Briggs Gallahue. He read that, reacted beautifully, did Briggs Gallahue to throw him for a loss of a yard or two on the play, and now it'll be second down and goal. Yeah, and again, that was, as you said, very well read there by Briggs Gallahue, but you also... You see the power of Trent Nightmare, number 33. He took on a blow there, and he kept going. He These did. backs for Whiteford, they don't go down on first contact. Fairview 7, Tenora nothing, end of one. Napoleon 7, Springfield nothing, end of one in Friday night football. Here at second and goal at the six-yard line for Whiteford. A little roll out to the right, back of the end zone. Catch is going to be made. Touchdown reception by Mason DeBar on that bootleg to the near side on second and goal. It's a six-yard TD pass, and Whiteford extends their lead. Trey Eitenire again off that play action. Again, all set up by the running game. It's three for three passing, 49 yards, and a touchdown. And the TD pass makes it 14-7 now. Whiteford with 68 seconds to play in this opening quarter, and this is a team in Whiteford that goes for two. They're successful on one two-point conversion already tonight. I think more high school teams ought to do that instead of running a field goal kicker on that makes 33% of their extra points. How about this power <laughs> eye look here? And a bootleg keep. Trey Eitner gets away from Nestor, got the corner, and did he get in? The official got knocked down, and they're waiting for a signal. Um, yeah, I think he did. Now they oh say boy. no. Wow. I think Eden caught a break there because well, that too. side judge went on his backside. Uh, he reached over. Uh, Andy, I had a pretty good view here, and, and I'll call like it is. I don't care who wins the game. From my viewpoint, at least, he was in. He was in. Now, yeah. Todd Teakins on the other side, and he's kind of got his hands up, but he's not arguing it too much. So he didn't have a very good view of it. But, boy, I think Eden caught a big break there. We'll see if that comes into play as the game goes on. Quick break. Final 108 of the quarter coming up. 14-7 Bobcats. The more your life changes, the more your insurance needs change. See Danielle Van Atta of Danielle Van Atta Agency today. She can conduct a free personal insurance review to help you determine how much and what type of coverage is right for you with no costly gaps or overlaps. Interested? Phone Danielle Van Atta today at 419-636-0408. Andy Briggle, Mike Bum, back here at Leanne Field on week five of high school football here in the Buckeye State. It's a 14-7 game. Two possessions for Whiteford, two touchdowns for Whiteford. Trent Neitner with a 73-yard explosion for a touchdown. They got the two-point try. And then Trey Eitner to 
uh, Mason DeBar on a six-yard TD pass. They missed the two-pointer. Meanwhile, Eden, 13 plays, 65-yard opening drive, sap an eight-yard run for their points. Either team's defense has given me any reason to think that they can consistently give stops right now. Now, I know Eden had to punt, but that was all set up by a penalty, a big penalty after a uh, Kyler Sapp's 22-yard gain. And Eden hasn't shown me any reason why they can stop uh, Whiteford either. So uh, if you like offense, if it continues on the way it's going, this is a game for you people. Trey Eitner to kick it away. The sophomore run up and kick from the 40. Keeps it in play this time. Stance will get a return from the 11. 15-20. Middle return, 25-30. 35-40. And he ran into his own man at the 45-yard line. The credit for the tackle will be to Gabe Sp uh, Spiewike. However, an Eden blocker slowed the uh, run down from Stance. The first time Whiteford's kicked the ball inbounds on their kickoffs. That's their third kickoff. Maybe that's the reason why. Yeah. That's what we said. Going back to maybe it was part of the game plan. The return is of 34 yards out to the 43-yard line. First and 10, Eden from their own 43. Patrick Henry, 19. Brian, nothing. Early second quarter, five-wide look here. Sap to roll out, throws uh, low to Halbert that time. Kyler knows he'd love to have that one back because... He's talking with Cohen Holbert right now, kind of tapped and said, that's my bad. He threw that one low. It was a just a little curl route out in the flat. Second yeah. down and 10 yeah. coming up. Yeah, this looked like his hands never really got on the ball there, and, and, and as you said, threw it low. Thought maybe Cohen could have brought that in, but even if he did, it would have been about a one-yard gain. Clock stops at 56 seconds to play in this first quarter. 14-7 Whiteford on the Andres O'Neill and Low scoreboard. Second and 10, Eden at their own 43 two-by-two two look, and now coming in motion to the near side out of the backfield is Halbert. Little tunnel screen to the near side to Briggle. Briggle burrows his way out near midfield. Gabe Spiewike with the tackle at the 48-yard line, a catch-and-run of five, and it'll leave Eden with a third and five coming up. Already, Keller Sapp, we're not even into the first quarter, still going here with 35 seconds left, throwing the ball 15 times already. 68 yards in the air. Third and five. Eden from their own 48. Trips to the right. Deuces to the left. Some movement. I don't think they got into the neutral zone. They didn't. Three-man rush to play on. Sap flat fires near side. Pass is caught by Briggle. It's a first down to the 41-yard line. That is a gain of 11 on the play, and Eaton keeps the drive alive. A critical third down conversion there. It sure was, and again, that's the most important down of the game obviously how you convert on third down both teams have shown that they have been successful so far doing that first and 10 eden at the whiteford 41 hash mark near side final 16 seconds of the first quarter one receiver comes to the left three receivers and a wing to the right side sap on a sprint out to the right fires on the move passes caught by colton willows almost made a double catch and he's wrestled out of bounds at about the 29-yard line by Drew Ruddy. Gain of 11 and a first down for Eden. Again, Bob Owen through Kyler Sapp, spreading the ball around. That's first. Willis. That's, well, excuse me, Andy. That's Willis's fourth catch already for 36 yards. First and 10, Eden at the 39-yard line of Whiteford. Bobcats 14, the Bombers 7 as we come to the final stages here of quarter number one in bomber country on this friday night week five three receivers left two receivers right play clock down to five sap with an empty backfield sap to throw pass is caught ray to ball 25 ray to ball 20 little shake and bake move ushered out of bounds actually stepped out of bounds inside the 20 at the 17 yard line he'll get 12 on the play that's ray to ball's first catch of the game and the play leaves us with one tick on the clock. You talk about spreading the wealth of Eden already has thrown to one, two, three, four, five different wide receivers this game. And we're only in the first quarter. For one more snap, we're in that first quarter. After that pickup of 12, it's a first and 10 at the 17 of Whiteford. Two receivers bunched left. Two receivers kind of stacked to the right. One of them comes in motion to the near side, one running back. It's a play action. Sap flush to the near side. Sap just going to dump it out of bounds and play for another down. That'll do it for the first quarter of football here at Leanne Field in Eden.
The score is Whiteford 14, Eden 7. You're listening to High School Football on B-Rock Sports. Get to Donaldson's Ace Hardware on North Union Street in Bryan and pick up your gallon of paint to finish those outdoor projects while the weather is still nice. Find the newest colors that are trending for 2024 and the best paint on the market. Clark and Kensington. Clark and Kensington paint should be your paint of choice. With excellent coverage, washability, and a lifetime warranty, Clark and Kensington paint with the primer built right in is the only paint you'll ever buy. And Donaldson's Ace Hardware on North Union Street in Bryan is the place to help. Ace the helpful place. Your friends at your neighborhood Eden Farmers Co-op Country Store would like to invite you to stop in at the Eden, Montpelier, and Edgerton stores to check out their complete line of pet supplies, animal feed, and outdoor products. Their friendly, knowledgeable staff is ready to answer all of your questions concerning their complete line of Kalmbach, Land O'Lakes, and much, much more. For your convenience, your purchase can be carried to your vehicle by one of their employees. Be sure to stop by soon and see them at your hometown country store the eden farmers co-op a couple of scores in the gmc hicksville eight antwerp six and at the end of one paulding 14 airsville nothing paulding's allowed one touchdown on the year through the first month of the season could be a dark horse in the gmc race fairview's looking strong right now they're up 21 to zip against tenora So we're ready to begin quarter number two. Eden trailing Whiteford 14 to 7. Second and 10, Eden at the 17 yard line of Whiteford. What were your impressions of that first quarter? I mean, other than what we've talked about, anything else jump out at you? Uh, high executing offenses on both sides. Both defenses really don't have an answer. Even the one punt that Eden had really was all based off that, that penalty. But Eden on the other side, as I said, they haven't been able to stop Whiteford. You just get that feel, Andy. I know it's only the first quarter. And we've seen Eden against Edgerton feel like they were never going to get a stop, and that changed in the second half. But right now, if you're asking me, uh, I'm going to tell you whoever's got the ball last is going to win this game. <laughs> now, that's after only the, the data point is only one quarter, so that could change. All right, starting <laughs> the second quarter on a second and ten. Five wide look, three to the right, two to the left. Sap. Under no pressure right now. Steps up, throws towards the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Kendall Bregel! A step up in the pocket, just avoiding disaster by Sapp. He felt it and then knew he had a six foot three inch target in the back of the end zone. Just throw it up high and let the big fella go get it. And that's exactly what he did. Much like when Knight and I are through it to Mason DeBar. Just threw it up a 50-50 ball, and Briggle did the rest there. That'll make it 14-13, and a sap extra point attempt away from a tie. Briggle to hold. The kick on the way, and he will split the sticks. We are deadlocked at 14 very early here in quarter number two. Terrific matchup here on a Friday night. That is a seven-play, 57-yard drive. And Sapp gets his second total touchdown of the night. Now one rushing to go along with his, I'm sorry, one passing to go along with his rushing touchdown of the evening. 11.52 to go in this opening half of football. By the way, Whiteford had a 24-game winning streak overall. That was a regular season winning streak. Snapped earlier with that loss to Ida. We talked about how impressive this program has been, not just under Todd Teakin or the last coach. It's been really good for a long, sustained period of time. By the way, end of one, Liberty Center. This was a pick-your-score night. Yeah. Liberty 42, Swanton nothing. Yeah, I think uh, I think the day has come, Ange, for Swanton to get into the tack. I think it'd be a good conference for Whiteford, too. Patrick tack. Henry, by the way, 26 nothing on Brian and Delda handling Archibald 17 to nothing. Well, Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, I think the tack has got some opportunities to expand and solidify that conference, which, let's face, has been on life support. You got a couple chances 
with Whiteford having an opportunity to get them. I don't know what their convictions are, but I know a lot of teams that they're playing are going to eight man. And then Swanton, you can't continually get drilled like that year in and year yeah. out in the NWA. Well, and it's if not, you're, it's not 19, Tommy Eitenier is not playing quarterback Swanton no, anymore. No, <laughs> and and if you're not proactive, you're reactive, and yeah. that's when you die and perish. Yeah, for sure. Football's a, it's a new landscape. It's a new future for the game of football, yeah. particularly at the high school level, and you got to find ways to exist. Here's Sap with a kick. Both these teams are existing tonight. Fantastic quarter and eight seconds. Here comes the return from the far side. Antonio Noctrob, he's got speed. 25-30, 35-yard line will be knocked down there. Caden Stance brought him down, got some help as well from Grant Reed. And it will be a first and 10 Whiteford at their own 35-yard line. A question that you're going to probably have for me at some point, Andy, I hate to get ahead of myself, is what kind of adjustments specifically can Eden do on the defensive side? I don't know if there is any. you got to simply line up. You're playing this game in a phone booth. Whiteford splits are heel to heel. They simply block down and pull and do a lot of countering. you simply got to man up and be more physical and recreate the line of scrimmage so that you can get more hats to the football. So I don't know if there's anything schematically you could do differently. It's a great point. First down and 10 from their own 35-yard line, Whiteford. Ball resting middle of the field. Bobcats going right to left. There's that power eye look. Under center to the deep eye back. Nothing doing for Trenton Eitner as Eden Hammers their way through. Braden Worley was there, and so was Blake Baker. It'll be a loss of a couple. It'll be second in a dozen. Back at their own 33. And that's something what you have to do. Just win up front. It's got to be physical. you got to get off the ball a little bit quicker. you got to get better leverage on that. It's so important for him to win on those early downs because if they get into situations on second and short, here comes a play action by Eitner. Second down and 12 from their own 33. Double wing, double tight set. Bootleg pass off the play action. Dumped in the flat. Pass is caught. Drew Ruddy, 35-40. Out of bounds as he skids out of bounds. And a late flag coming on Eden. He already had the first down to the 47. Gain of 14. And then they're going to add 15 at the end. On a personal foul, late hit. Yeah, I don't know if I like that, Andy, because I thought, was that Briggle on that? I could not tell. But it looked like he just kind of lost his feet. There was contact, but was incidental. Now, they're going to talk about it. Yeah, There's a I chance think, maybe they pick it up. I, I think that's one of those you do pick up, but I'd be surprised when it's on the sideline of Whiteford. Nope, they're not picking it up. It no. is a personal foul, Eden. So now that will take Listen, them from the 49, yeah. their own 49, all the way down to the 36 now, the Bombers. And that's big in this type of a ball control uh, team that, that Whiteford is. You don't want to give them the short field. Listen, I don't think it was a great call, but I can't argue it because there was contact. I just think it was incidental on the other side. First and 10, Bobcats. How about Trey Eitner so far? Four passes, Angie. Four completions, 63 yards, and a touchdown pass. He's pretty good at that pretty, sophomore. Pretty efficient. First and 10, uh, Whiteford at the Eden 36. Up, or I'm sorry, tied at 14. Man goes in motion far side, and a blitz was coming from Braden Worley, but Braden didn't wait for the ball to be snapped. He was five yards into the backfield. Whiteford had held their ground, so that is stealing five, and now it'll be first and five, Whiteford. Eden's trying to do whatever they can to disrupt this running game, and the last couple plays, they blitz people, got away with it on first down. That time, Worley just kind of couldn't time her up. Meeting number three between these two schools, both ranked. Eden, of course, here in Ohio, number 21 in the Max Pre uh, Preps poll, number seven, tied for seventh in the AP poll. Michigan, up in Michigan in the free press poll, Whiteford began the year ranked number one. 21-7 now. Tenora's on the board. Fairview with the lead. Defiance doubling up Shawnee. 14-7. And now the officials have said that they have picked that flag up and not penalized Eden. I'm not sure how that is not a flag. I mean, he came well, through the guard center hole and was in the backfield. I don't either. Um, Coach Todd Teakin is a little bit and now Eden wants to, somebody wants a timeout. Let's see who it's going to. Timeout on the field. It'll be Whiteford taking the timeout. 
we'll kind of catch our breath and figure out what in the heck just happened. 1059 left in the half, 14 apiece in this one. Eden and Whiteford on V Rock Sports. Always supporting student athletes and coaches in the Eden School District, the Eden Athletic Boosters. The Eden Athletic Boosters would like to take this opportunity to salute the student athletes and coaches in tonight's game. Hey, how would you like to be a part of the Eden Athletic Boosters? Come to a meeting and find out what they're all about. Maybe even volunteer at a concession stand. For more information, phone 419-272-3213. The Eden Athletic Boosters, supporting student athletes and coaches in Eden. 10.59 left in this first half of football. It is 14 apiece, Eden and Whiteford. Timeout that time to the Bobcats. Their first spent on the game. It'll don't, be a first and ten now. Yeah. So evidently it's a it's a do it over again. I, I don't know why that could be. Todd Keegan's not very happy. Wait a minute. Now they have taken it five yards. So they'll move it to the 31 yard line. I, I mean, listen. They called the flag. Eden was five yards into the backfield. I didn't understand to begin with why it got moved back. At the end of the day, this is the right call. Right. Eden jumped into the neutral zone and beyond. Eden jumped into the kitchen. Yeah. So it should be first and five. They got it right. Yes. They Not got a drama, it right. but we got it right. That's Let's right. move on, play football. That's exactly <laughs> right. Bob wants his explanation like Todd Teakin, as you would anticipate. Sure. He has it. Great crowd here, Angie. It is. Whiteford, 75 miles away, bringing a great crowd. And as we, if you missed the broadcast, uh, the pregame of the broadcast, they six of their nine games on the road this year. You can't continue to sustain that. It's too good of a program. It will be balanced la next year, yeah. starting next year. Counter give and a sweep to the right. Breck ready with running room, 25-20. And he'll be taken down near the 20-yard line on... A first and five, he's going to have about 11, and that moves the chain. Back to them only playing three home games. That's not fair to their students, their players, uh, all the people that love to watch high school football on Friday nights with such a great quality program that Whiteford is. And I know the administration knows that, and sometimes you get caught in those years, but yeah. uh, th th only three home games. And, just, it just didn't fair. And if you're unaware why, the, a lot of, or a handful of the teams moved to eight-man football, yeah. so they had to go find games yes. and do the best yeah, they could. Sure. So double wing look here. Actually, a double wing to the left, and uh, oh, they got a ball on the turf, on the jet sweep. Eden has recovered the fumble. Brick Ruddy never looked it in, and Parker Kelly pounced on it. First mistake of the night belongs and goes to Eden's direction. Turnovers in any game are the number one issue why a team wins or loses. I think in this game, when both defenses have shown that they're going to have, they're going to struggle to stop the other's offense, it becomes tenfold how important it is. So big play. We talked about Parker Kelly. He's got to step up as the best defensive and offensive lineman. Big play on the fumble recovery. First down and 10, Eden at their own 23 as they move left to right for the first time tonight. Five wide, empty look. Sap fires far side. Briggle the catch. Lost his footing going when he's making a cut. Stumbles forward for about seven on the play. He'll be covered up on the far side by Brody Hillard. And it will be a second and short, second down and three. Kyler Sapp has already thrown the ball 20 times tonight for 116 yards. Again, being very patient, throwing those short little intermediate routes and little stop routes. Again, that's part of Bob Owens' M.O., that first half especially. He'll take what the defense gives you. Then he starts to loosen up a little bit in the second half. Three to the right, two to the left. Sapp looks, comes back near side. Holbert's catch. Holbert will get to the 38-yard line. Forward progress will be enough for a first down. Down, Breck Ruddy with the first contact. It's a gain of six, and it'll be first and ten. It's a great catch that time by Holbert. That was a tight window that Sapp threw it in there at. Eden 14, Whiteford 14. Holbert's third catch for 16 yards already. Still a long way to go here in this first half. Ten minutes in counting to play in the first half of football. Bombers with a first and ten at their own 38. Ball middle of the field. Three receivers, bunch left. One receiver to the right. Hulbert, the running back, as the right halfback now goes in motion to the far side. Sapp will throw a little bubble screen that way. 35, got a block 40. Out near the 43-yard line where he'll be 
sandwiched down by a pair of defenders. First on the tackle, Nolan Walker. He's their best defensive lineman, 6'2", two, two and a quarter, and a junior. And that's Eden's version of a run play there. Gets Holbert, a little swing pass out. Try to get the big, strong back shoulder square and going downhill, and he's very tough to tackle. Got it out to the 43-yard line, so a pickup of five. It'll be second down and five bombers. Moving left to right, 14 apiece on the Andres O'Neill and Low School Board. Four receivers right, one receiver to the left, three down linemen for the Bobcats. Sap, quarterback draw, 40, 45, 50, big hole, 45, 40. Sap will be knocked down at the 38-yard line. He'll rumble for 19 on a designed run that time for a first down. First design run that Eden has had that time with Sap. That's Sap's fifth carry, but all of them have been just freelancing when there's been pressure. And now there's a penalty after the play, Ange, and we'll see what this is about. Looks like it's going to go against Eden. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, con uh, or is it a sideline warning? Well, if it's a sideline warning, it's just that, only a warning. It's the second that's, time. That's not what it was. Yeah. Man. He had poor mechanics on that call because he handed out almost like Vince Vaughn playing Jesus in Four Christmases, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I thought he's signaling sideline. What he, what he was signaling yeah. was unsportsmanlike. Well, Sapp will still get the big gain, but nonetheless, Edens is going to go back to about maybe a two-yard gain from that last play, and I guess it's an unsportsmanlike kind. I didn't see anything. Yeah, yeah, it is unsportsmanlike. So now... That's a big game. It's a dead ball, teams, so way. it should be a first down on the, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, you got a big crowd here. you got two teams, two coaching staffs that are passionate. And, and, and rightfully so, because this is a game, you know, this is one of the few teams that can beat Eden. And, and Whiteford, again, a perennial powerhouse in, in Michigan. They recognize that this is two quality teams or a quality team that they're facing tonight. So uh, let's, let's reset the situation. It was a first down, dead ball, so come back 15. It's first and 10, Eden, back at their own 47. Nine minutes to play in this first half and counting. 14 apiece, Eden and Whiteford. A wing to the right, two receivers right, two receivers left. Sap with an empty look, fake the bubble screen. Now they want the go route, and it's way underthrown by Kyler Sap that time. Yeah. It was intended for Eli Dickman, Antonio Noctrob, Maybe the fastest player on the team, certainly in the top couple, uh, lost his footing. Or if he comes back, he's got an interception and a lot of return room. Yeah, you don't say this very often, but that was a poorly thrown ball by Kyler Sapp. Second down and long now, second and 10 from their own 47. Three receivers to the right, two receivers to the left, empty backfield. On this second and 10, Sapp with time. A three-man rush, fires an out route incomplete, far side of the field. That'll make it third down and 10. 56 nothing. Liberty Center over Swanton halfway through the second quarter. Third and 10, Eden from their own 47. 14 apiece, Bombers and Bobcats. 8.45 to go in this first half. Entertaining first half of football. Glad you could be with us here tonight. Five wide look, three to the right, two to the left, empty backfield on third down and ten. Three rushers. Now a late blitzer coming. Eden picks it up, so it's a four-man rush. Sap with room, 45-50, closing speed that time by Breck Ruddy to knock him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That will be a gain of eight, and it's going to leave Eden with a fourth and two. Yeah, going to be really close. We know what Bob Owen's going to do here, Andy. You call it fourth and two. I'm going to call it fourth and one. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah, Kyler got a good spot inside the 45 instead of outside the 45. So you're right. It's a run of nine, and it'll be fourth and one, and Eden's offense stays out there in a fourth and short. Fourth down and one. Just inside the 45-yard line. Sapp will have three receivers to the right, two receivers left. This has quarterback draw written all over it for a yard. And now a timeout on the field taken, and we will take it with them. Eight and a half to go, first half. Tie game at 14, a fourth and short for Eden, plus territory when we come back. 
Precise Metal Form, 810 Commerce Drive in Bryan, wants to say good luck to the Eden Bombers in tonight's athletic contest. Precise Metal Form is a proud supporter of Eden Bomber Athletics, both boys and girls sports. Precise Metal Form in Bryan, saluting the athletes on all of their hard work and wishing them the best of luck in this athletic contest. Precise Metal Form, 810 Commerce Drive in Bryan, saying go Bombers in this game. Fourth down and one for Eden at the 45, just inside the 45-yard line of Whiteford in a tie game at 14. Here, eight and a half minute mark of the second quarter. What do you like here? Well, again, nothing for granted because Eden's obviously out of the shotgun, so you're automatically five to six yards back from the line of scrimmage. Um, conventional wisdom would be just that. Get the ball to your best player, Kyler Sapp, and just let him the quarterback draw. Um, but I think you run some crossing routes. <laughs> that all being said, and if those crossing routes aren't there, let Kyler Sapp improvise. It, it, there's, there's four <laughs> receivers stacked far side. Is this window dressing yeah. for a quarterback draw? And now timeout, Eden, after they saw what Whiteford had aligned. We're going to stay right here. I think that was window dressing. Yeah, and that you had that right, Andy. It probably had quarterback draw written all over at that time. And, I saw Coach Owen talking to Parker Kelly, the left tackle there. You wonder, that's their best offensive lineman. Talk to Parker, you know, which way is he going? Can you move him off the ball? And those kind of things coaches talk about, especially on those third and fourth down in short situations with all they need is a yard. Another slow start for Brody Flagle and Edgerton. Winless Wayne Trace against a better schedule than Edgerton's sure. played. But Wayne Trace, a 6 nothing lead at halftime there. Couple things, not making excuses. Edgerton, the flu bugs going through their program right now. Yes, they have been a slow starting team, and you're exactly right. An 0 and 4 team that uh, Wayne Trace, maybe the best 0 and 4 Listen, team in the state. Nobody's dialed in more than you. Listen, I mean, you're throwing out an Edgerton flu bug as a as an admin at Montpelier. The fingers are on the pulse, baby, man. <laughs> I mean, this is I don't why. I show up here and talk. I, I, gotta, I don't have your skills and talent. I got to do my homework, this, brother. This is the reason why we throw nine figures at Fozzie Bear <laughs> yeah. to do this job. All right. Three receivers left, two receivers right, empty backfield, fourth and one, Eden at the 45. Four down linemen, Eden's going to throw. They'll sling it to the right, pass is caught for a first down, reception made. Eli Dickman shoved out of bounds by Antonio Noctrob after a gain of seven, and they cash in on fourth down and one. Well, that's a big catch by Eli Dickman. He took a shot there at the end, too, and hung on to it. Patrick Henry, 32 love on Brian, nearing halftime, so that'll be a running clock game. Paulding overpowering Ayersville, 21 to nothing, the score there in that one. This is why we do these games, Ann. This has been fun. Up and down, a lot of offense, two quality football teams. Trips to the left, twins to the right, first and 10 at the 37. Now Halbert comes in motion to the near side and movement up front on Eden, so that'll cost them five, and it'll be first and 15. 8.04 mark, second quarter. 14 apiece, Eden and Whiteford. I think, you know, penalties obviously hurt everybody, but if you had to gauge who's it hurt more because of the style of offenses, I, I would think it hurts probably Whiteford more when they get a, a legal procedure than more so than it does Eden, who throws the ball every down. Line of scrimmage now for the Bombers, the 42-yard line of Whiteford. Hash mark near side. Eden has been playing had a lot of snaps in whiteford territory remember one of the scores for whiteford a quick hitter from 70 plus out five wide look three to the left two to the right sap with a pump left there's the go route down the seam pass is caught 20 10 5 sliding into the end zone max Radabaugh touchdown from 42 yards out little wheel route and listen Reasonable people can argue, and I know the Eden faithful don't care who the best receiver is because there's a lot of good ones on this Bomber team. But Max Radable is the best route runner, and that time the defender for Whiteward bit on a wheel route, and Radable went right up the sideline, and there was nobody on him. And Eden, for a second time tonight, has the lead now at 20 to 14 with the PAT coming up right now. Snap, spot, kick on the way, extra point slides through and it's 21 14 bombers out in front nine plays 
67 yards on the drive. Sapp gets his second TD pass of the night. One of them to Briggle, one of them to Ray DeBaugh, and then the one rushing touchdown for Eden. Trent Knight and I are 73-yard burst for a touchdown for Whiteford, and then Trey Eitner to uh, Mason DeBar on a six-yard TD pass. And that is where we stand, and we have an injured bomber down that was hurt on that extra point attempt. Yeah, and I think it's Cohen Holbert. That'd be a big loss, uh, the linebacker and H-back for the bombers. And good thing he's getting up, and I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, I think he just may have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Wind knocked out of him or hitting the midsection sometimes. That can hurt a little bit. <laughs> you say midsection, I say south of the equator. Either way, you every, say tomato, I say tomato, right? <laughs> every, either way, every male in our listening audience is cringing right now. But he, did, he didn't walk off, Foz, with that that double over yeah. look. So I'm going to go win knocked out of Let's him. Let's do it. <laughs> 21-14 as we stay right here on this Friday night. Eden reclaiming the lead. Bombers 4-0, and Whiteford 2-1 and one entering play here tonight. Whiteford's only loss on the season coming at the hands of Ida, Michigan. And Eden has had a, a month of football, and starters have only played one full game. That was back in week one. Yep. That is certainly something to keep an eye on if this thing stays close later in the game. I mean, you can look at it as, okay, they've got fresher legs because they're, you know, they've had some rest, or have they been involved? Now, that was a gut check win over Edgerton, no question about it, because they had to rally from double digits down in that one. But just something to throw out and keep an eye on. Breck Ruddy, the return from the 17, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, tumbles forward to the 44-yard line. Breck Ruddy, and then a finishing block here by Gabe Spiewak on the near side. Well, good no call, too. Coach, the Eden coaching staff wants a flag on that. But I like, listen, if you, I like the officials doing a nice job of letting them play a little bit. Kids are going to be competitive, and there's going to be some extra stuff. There's nothing wrong with physical. No, no. What do they say? Play to the echo of the whistle, right? Yep. First and 10, Whiteford from their own 44-yard line. Trailing now for a second time tonight. Double wing look, a stand-up receiver to the right side. One of the wings goes in motion to the far side. Trey Eitner on the run. Eitner throws in the flat, got a wide open man caught by Breck Ruddy. Sideline right, 40, 35, 30, and he is taken down by Sapp. Kyler just made a touchdown saving tackle as Breck Ruddy, he has got some juice yeah. when he gets in the open field. He rumbles to the 22-yard line and has a first down. Gain of 34 on that pass play. Yeah, there's just no and There's so many people committed to the line of scrimmage for Eden trying to stop the run. That wide receiver, or excuse me, tight ends leaking out and drag routes or running backs into the flat air. There's just simply nobody there. Double wing, one running back look here on the first and 10 at the 22. Counter handoff to Breck Ruddy as he lunges forward near the 20, has a couple of yards on the carry. Blake Baker made the stop for Eden. It'll be second down and eight. Trey Eitenauer, five for five, 97 yards, and a touchdown pass. Came in 18 of 35 for 280, four touchdowns and two INTs on the season. Has added that fifth touchdown pass of the year, or sixth touchdown. He has you no know, one, five touchdown passes now on the season. Second and eight. From the 20-yard line, clock at six and a half and rolling to play. First half, 21-14, Eden, there's that play action again. Trey Eitner flushed out of the pocket. Eitner is just going to step out of bounds. He saw the big fella coming at him, Parker Kelly, and got out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That'll leave them now with a third down and nine on the play. So third and nine back at the 20, actually third and 10 back at the 22. So he lost both the yards that were picked up on first down so third and ten for this Whiteford offense probably four down territory where they're at here 21 14 Eden on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard wing left and right double tight set one running back third and ten Eitner to throw Eitner looks 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 slings it looks end zone incomplete double coverage that time by the bombers really good on mason debar and now it'll be fourth and ten to the short side of the this wasn't much right there i'm surprised coach teakin 
opted to, to run that route and not go through go to the wide side of the field. Nonetheless, it's a fourth down and nine situation. So Eden really needs to play a little bit looser and not try to pounce on all the running game like they have been there, anticipating some form of a play-action pass. Boz, keep an eye on number five. Drew Ruddy is up and is limping. It's noticeable as he came back to the huddle. He is one of their key weapons. Fourth down and ten. He'll remain in the game. Eitner under center. One running back. Double wing look. Fourth and ten. Play action isn't as... Uh, lethal in this situation and the play clock will run out but a timeout was taken first with 609 left we're going to stay here on this big fourth down and 10 and i'm continuing to watch number five he's laboring a little bit as he heads over to that sideline so now so we talked about the strength of whiteford offensively it's the, because the they run so efficiently and effectively that it sets up that passing game. Now, fourth and ten, everybody knows what's coming in this, so there's no play action that's going to fool any, anybody. Everybody knows. You're going to drop four, at least in the secondary, and your linebackers. So you're going to have six people in coverage. They're not going to run the ball. They've got to pass. Whether it's a play action or straight drop back, most of the pass plays are schemed uh, for Whiteford as a play action pass. But you want to keep everything in front of you and rally to the football and don't give them more than nine yards on this. So a little bit different dynamic than what Eden has had to deal with so far when they've got to commit eight, nine guys to the line of scrimmage and that left Whiteford wide receivers and running backs out of the backfield yeah. running right down the field with nobody on them. Fourth down and 10, Whiteford at the Eden 22. 6.09 left, first half. 21-14, Eden here on the Andres O'Neill and Low scoreboard. Again, uh, uh, the double tight formation. One running back, Eitner under center. Eitner does go play action. Baker giving chase, throws towards the end zone, incomplete. Sap Lilly, good coverage on that far side. It was intended for Antonio Noctrob, and Eaton gets the stop on downs. It's a big stop. Anytime you get a stop in this game, because both offenses are having their way, it's huge. So far, Eden gets one on downs this time and also has the one lone turnover. Uh, and consequently, they're up by a score because of it. And now it becomes like, you, now can you capitalize on that stop? Can you go down and get points and make it a two-score lead, which becomes even larger when you've got two offenses that can score? Five wide look, three to the right. Quarterback draw, sap from the 20, hit his own lineman and nowhere to go. He is planted back at the 20-yard line. It'll be a loss of two on that designed run. Great job. Logan Riffle penetrating, six foot. Big fella, 265 up front. Second and 12 for Eden. Line of scrimmage now for the Bombers back at their own 20-yard line. Left to right, five and a half minute mark, quarter number two. 21-14, Eden on the Andres O'Neill and Low scoreboard. Two by, or two receivers to the right. There are three to the left. Coming in motion now will be Cohen Holbert to the near side. Sap pumps that way. Now goes down the seam. Briggle has to adjust, makes the sliding grab back at the 42-yard line inside of Brody Hillard. Good adjustment by Kendall Briggle to get 22 and a first down. Yeah, Kendall Briggle's already caught. Six passes tonight for 73 yards, Andy. First and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Liberty Center and Swanton at the half, 56-0. Liberty Center Tigers well on their way to 5-0. You know, I know you got continuous clock, but in that game, it's going to be tough for Liberty not to score 80. Three receivers right, two to the left. First and 10 at the 41. Sap. Looks, looks, nobody coming. Fires far side, a comeback route to Kendall Briggle. Steps out of bounds. Trey Eitner pushed him out, but he got 11 or 12, and it's another move, the sticks pass. Patience that time by Sapp in the pocket. Lots of time. Again, only a three-man rush. Now Eden's going hurry up. Yep, tempo here on first and 10 at the 48. Sapp flush to the near side, still looking. A little playground ball as he sends Dickman downfield and nowhere to go. It's out of bounds. Good coverage that time. Drew Ruddy had Dickman bottled up. Second down and 10. When I say playground, that was Kyler in scramble mode and just kind of directing receivers and pointing. Yeah. And nothing there that time. Again, he kind of think he threw that one away knowing no that there question. was not much there. Second and 10, Eden at the 48. They're right back on the ball. 441 left in the half. 
21-14, Eden from the 48 of Whiteford. No pressure on that uh, pass that time, and he slings it to the far side. Briggle with another sliding grab at the 40, so he'll collect eight, and it'll be third and two bombers at the Whiteford 40-yard line. And now you got Whiteford's big fellas up front that have been chasing Kyler Sapp that are now gassed a little bit here late stages, and Eden going to continue to apply pressure on third and two. Sapp on a rollout, got a man open, little toe tap, and... Out of bounds, did he make? He made the grab. Good catch, Briggs at Gallahue at the 35-yard line. He'll get five and a first down. First and 10, Eden at the 35. And I think Todd Teakin saw his football team running out of juice. And Double T calls a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. 21-14 Bombers on B-Rock Sports. That's a good point. I want to... Pelt's Lumber of Montpelier and Pioneer is here to serve you. Not only have they been offering the finest in building materials for generations, but they also have a website with over 80,000 items for you to browse right at your fingertips and in your own home. Just go to peltslumber.com and hit the products button. And there it is. Tools, hardware, lumber yard and building materials, windows, doors, kitchen and bath. Check out all the items you need and the prices and stop by the store in Montpelier or Pioneer or give them a call at 419-485-3059. Pelt's Lumber building for a new generation. First and 10, Eden at the 35-yard line of Whiteford. Timeout, Bobcats, Foz. I think you, as always, my good friend, hit the nail right on the head. When you have to line up as a down lineman, three linemen, sometimes four, and you're rushing the passer every single down, most of the time without any reward because you're not getting to the quarter, that's fatiguing. And I think that was a big reason why Eden beat Edgerton in week one. I thought those big guys up front just simply got tired. Todd Teakin, I think, recognized that, called timeout to give his kids a break. And by the way, if anybody wondered who Double T was, it's Todd Teakin. I don't know him well enough to throw out a nickname, but I did. I love it. Five wide look, three to the short side, two to the left on first and ten. Sap with tons of time. Looks deep. Wants the home run. Got it. And it's through the hands incomplete of Eli Dickman. Now, Dickman did have to turn a different way. He had it in his mitts and just could not it. Squeeze would it. have been a tough catch. He had to turn his whole body around, but boy, it hit him in the hands there. The coach is going to tell you, hit you in the hands, you ought to catch it. And, uh, would have been a big time catch, but did not, couldn't quite corral it. Third and 10, Eden, 35 yard line of Whiteford. 21 14 bombers. 221 yards for Kyler Sapp in the air he's thrown the ball 31 times already and we got four minutes left in the first half that's he's on a 60 attempt pace here angie two receivers <laughs> right two receivers left holbert the running back sap to throw again sap steps away from trouble picks up a block sap may run now 40 35 out of bounds and that could be a late hit it was right on the chalk and no call the official, shoved out of bounds by Mason DeBar. The official was right there watching it. He's shaking his head. I think it's a good no call. I know you hate to see Kyler Sapp get hit like that, but I don't think I think the official made the right call. So it's a run of about five, six, six yards. So third and four for Eden at the 29-yard line. It was close. It's close. But I think you're right. I think they may have. And that's I think a lot, got it right. And that's a lot of courage for the official when you're right there with Bob Owen staring at sure you the whole sideline and you still say no. That was legal. Third and four, three receivers left, and now they'll just get the first down as they get the hard count by Kyler Sapp to bring Whiteford into the neutral zone. You talk about fatigue. Sometimes when you get fatigued, you don't think as straight and you make mistakes. That could have been the possible could have yep. been the situation there. Fatigue leads to undisciplined football. There you go. First and 10, Eden at the 24-yard line as they get the five yards on the penalty. And now Eden, as they're moving here, you're not in any real hurry because you'd like to ideally score with a minute or two left knowing that you know Whiteford's a team that is more ball control oriented and you'd love to go in two scores ahead. First, remember, Whiteford yeah. gets the ball to start the second half. Yes, they do. First and 10 at the 24-yard line. Play clock, still plenty of time on it at 12, and now Bob Owen saw enough confusion. He says timeout. 3.54 remaining. First half of football, 21-14 Eden. Week 5 rolls on when we come back. 
Are you ready to tackle your next projects with the best equipment in town? Then look no further than Black Swamp Equipment, serving Bryant, Archbold, and Defiance. Right now, we have incredible deals on steel chainsaws. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a weekend warrior, steel has you covered. And that's not all. Need to chip or split that wood? We've got you covered with wood chipper and wood splitter rentals, too. But wait, there's more. Our Milwaukee tool sale is happening now. Upgrade your tool kit with top quality Milwaukee tools at unbeatable prices. Stop in or give us a call to discover everything that's on sale. Black Swamp Equipment. Locations in Bryan, Archbold, and Defiance. Andy Briggle next to my good friend Mike Bum back here in Eden at Leanne Field on a Friday night. Where else would you want to be here tonight? 21-14 Eden with the lead. And they have a first and 10. By the way, our timeout situation, none left for Whiteford. Eden has one. Yeah. No hurry to score. Obviously, you want to put the ball in the end zone to heck with the time. But in a perfect world, if you're an Eden fan, take some time off the clock, put it in the end zone, and don't, don't give Whiteford any time to go down the field and score before half. First and 10 at the 24-yard line out of a five-wide receiver look. Sap flush to the left. Sap is going to be tracked down and sacked back at the 30-yard line. Ran out of real estate, ran out of time. Mason DeBar gets him for a loss of six on the play. First sack of the night, Andy, on for either team. So it'll be a loss officially of seven as they'll bring him back to the 31-yard line. Second down and 17 for Eden at the 31. Clock down to 320 and rolling to play first half. 21-14 Eden. Two receivers right. Three are bunched to the left, so another empty backfield. Holbert comes in motion out of that triple set to the far side. Sap with a three-man rush. Steps up. A lot of room to run. Will. 30. 25. 20. Down at about the 17-yard line. Andy Trejo brought him down. He rumbles for 14, though, does Kyler Sapp, and it'll be third down and four. 14 rushes for Kyler Sapp, 68 yards on the ground. Pretty good day so far for him, 229 in the air and 68 on the ground. Third down and four. This is the 11th play of the drive. Trips to the right, deuces to the left on a third and four. Low snap. Sapp, it was a design run. The timing, though, broke it up. He's still able to battle close to first down yardage. Yep. If he gets it, that's all on the work of Kyle, uh, Kyler Sapp on that uh, run. It was a design run to the left side. Yeah, there was really nothing there. He got a it. Great job by Mason DeBar and the defensive line for Whiteford. And Kyler Sapp just being an athlete, creating something when there wasn't nothing there. Got four, and it'll be a first and ten on a third down conversion. Coming down towards two minutes to play. This here. is where Bob Owen has a little bit of clock management here. He's just taking his time. Again, Eden's get, first got to get in the end zone. No, no small order. And then, of course, ideally, you'd like to leave no time left for Whiteford. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Sap goes towards the end zone. A grab. Touchdown. Sliding grab. Front corner of the end zone. Holbert on the reception. And Eden extends to a two-score lead. Wow, that was a big-time catch. Really wasn't that well thrown of a ball that time by Sapp. And Cohen Holbert went down deep for that, slid in the ground, and just got enough to stay in bounds for the touchdown right by the pylon. Another double-digit drive for a score. 12 plays, 68 yards on the play. Sapp now for the extra point. Placed down by Breath. Blocked. Coming up the middle. That was Trenton Eitner who got that block, slicing through, and it's 27 to 14, Eden, but a big score to make it a two-score lead now for Eden late in the first half. Yeah, again, keep everything in front of you. Scotty. Big score for Eden right there again. Now you don't have to commit so many people to the line of scrimmage there, and you can relax a few of your defensive backs. Go ahead and give Whiteford five and six yard rushing play here with a minute 56. The whole key is just keep him out of the end zone. Whiteford doesn't have a field goal kicker, and then you're going to go in two yeah. scores ahead. No field goal kicker, no uh, timeouts remaining, so Eden has everything in their favor here to maintain this two-score advantage. 27-14, to 14, by the way, coming up, 
Our main stops of Northwest Ohio halftime report. We'll have some numbers to talk about from the first half of play. We will uh, get you back into the studio for score updates here this evening. All of that leading towards the end of the night in our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union scoreboard. Coming up at the half, Foz and I are going to talk about the first poll, uh, computer points poll that are out and see where everybody's at, see what matchups, talk about maybe uh, killer divisions, easier divisions. I don't ever want to say easy, but easier divisions that are uh, maybe manageable and uh, able to navigate for teams. So a lot of that coming up at our main stops. Halftime report. Still a minute 56 away. Kyler Sapp to kick it away, up 27-14 on this Friday night. It's our first two-score lead of the night in this one. Sapp punches it in the air, and that one will drift out of bounds near the 30-yard line. That's our third kick out of bounds combined here between the two teams tonight. Big race in the American League Central. Guardians playing St. Louis. It's a scoreless game in the first inning. Tigers make it a I was just thinking about that. Tigers not only have grabbed the three, they're tied for the two seed, and they were nine and a half games out not that long ago. Good time of year, isn't it? It sure is. I mean, we got a lot going on. When we on. get into October, my friend, yeah. there's nothing better. It's that time where you converge all four of your major sports that are playing, and you get high school playoffs, yeah. and they're going to make them kick it again. They're not going to take it at the they 35. Are. And again, Whiteford has shown that they can bust it, too. They got some speed back there. and Right now, number 22, of course, has had a great day, great game. Breck Ruddy. Breck Ruddy. And, and number 25 showing a lot of speed. Antonio Noctrab, am I pronouncing that right? So, again, Eden's got to be, which is probably the reason why they wanted to kick it out to begin with here. But Detroit is losing tonight to Baltimore. It's a weekend series. Tigers and Orioles, 5 nothing. Baltimore, the lead in that when one. When you hear the Baltimore Orioles, what's, I mean, What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Cal Ripken for Cal my Ripken? generation. Okay. Yeah, 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 for my yeah. generation. Okay. Mine's Earl Weaver. <laughs> well, <laughs> nobody, other than maybe Lou Pinella, yeah. nobody had a rant in our days growing up like uh, Earl Weaver. <laughs> Here's the run up and the kick by Sap. It's going to hit at the 30, skid and on one hop, knock trap to the 30, 35 and they'll gain three yards by making them kick it over. Good job gang tackling that time by Eden. So right now, if you're Eden, the defensive coaches are gathering their guys. Again, you're going to play zone defense behind, probably two safeties. You don't have to commit so many bodies in this situation to the run. Go ahead and give White for three and four and five yard and crack running plays. The whole point is get as much of that time off. There's no timeouts for White Whiteford and get out of this half with a two-score lead. It's a drive that's going to start for Whiteford at their own 38-yard line. 27-14, Eden in front. 149 remaining here in this first half. Four down linemen for the Bombers. There will be a receiver to the right, double wing look, one running back, Trey Eitner under center. Play action fake, getting chased from behind, fires far side, a sliding grab on a comeback route is made after a pickup of nine on the play, Trejo with the grab. So it's a gain of nine. And you're fine if you're eating on that. You're fine with that. Second down and one. Ball still not placed. 127, 126. Tick, 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 tick. Second and a long one from the 47. Eden coming on a blitz. Eitner throws far side, a juggling grab made near midfield. It's enough for a first down and a pickup of three. Not so sure what the point is on blitzing in this situation. The whole key is to keep everything in front of you if you're eating. Again, get those safeties back, and all you say to them is nobody gets behind you. So he did get out of bounds at midfield. Trail on the grab, far side. First and ten, Whiteford at midfield. 27-14, Eden. 75 seconds left in the first half. Double wing look, receiver to the left. One running back. Eitner under center. Roll him out to the near side. Now Eitner under pressure, got away from Gage Nestor. Now going to try to run and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Punched out of bounds on that far side. No gain on the play. Coming up was Caden Stance on that stop. So it's second and 10, Whiteford near midfield. Did get out of bounds, so the clock will stop. 105 left in this first half. Again, no timeouts left for Whiteford. Eden does have one in their pocket if they need one. Second down and 10, Whiteford. 
Play clock still plenty of time on it at 18. Speaking in the ear of the official, I wondered if he thought that his quarterback got hit a little bit late. Did not look like it from our perspective. Second and 10 at midfield. Double wing, double tight. One receiver to the right. One running back behind Eitner. Eitner, a straight drop. Throws it far side. Pass is caught. Stepping out of bounds. Connor Beasley. He'll pick up five, and it'll be third and five, a play that took only five seconds. Exactly one minute to go, first half of play. Eitner, nine for 10 now for 113 yards, one TD. Third and five. Whiteford at the 45 of Eden. Connor Beasley on that last grab, Fozzie. Third down and five, same formation, only they'll flip the receiver from the right to the left side. They want him near side. Little curl route, Beasley another grab. He has a first down, wrestled down at the 37-yard line. He'll gain eight on the play, and clock will stop to move the chains. We're at 52 seconds right now. But kept Beasley in bounds, and the clock is continuing. 27-14, double wing formation, and a spike that time by Trey Eitner to stop the clock. So 45 seconds remaining, first half. Second down and 10 coming up. GMC update. Wayne Trace now a two-score lead on Edgerton as the Raiders look for their first win. 13-0, Wayne Trace with the lead. Edgerton coming in at 3-1. and one. Second and 10 for Whiteford at the 37 of Eden. Hash mark near side. Whiteford moving right to left. Play clock at 10. 27-14 Bombers. They'll split a receiver right and left down. Double wing look. Play clock at 3. At 2. Eitner gets the snap. Eitner with time. A go route for Beasley, and he overthrew him. Bracketed coverage that time. Stance underneath, and then out of the Tampa 2 over the top, Gallahue. And that'll stop the clock now with 3rd and 10. 39 seconds to play in the half. Third and 10 at the 37-yard line. Again, no timeouts left for Whiteford. You have some options here. Have some options. Remember, first down uh, pickup does stop the clock. But if you don't get the first down, and you can't spike it now because you're on third down. That's huge. You've either got to catch the ball in the middle of the field, get up and spike it, or work the sideline. And make sure you get a first down if you're going to do the first thing. Third and 10, 37-yard line. 27-14 27-14 Eden. A roll out to the right side. Hulbert chasing Eitner. It's back over the middle. Pass is caught at the 30. Ruddy battles to the 28-yard line. To make that Trent Eitner, he's going to be short of the first down. He got nine, bummer. So it'll be fourth and one. Down to 20 seconds left. Trey Eitner far side. Beasley the catch. Did he get the yard? I think he did. With 14 seconds left, he's down at the 26-yard line is where they're spotting him. And now let's wait for the official spot here. And do we need a measurement? Nope, they say first down. The chains are moving. 14 seconds left in the half. No timeouts left for Whiteford. They have a first and 10 at the Eden 26-yard line. You have time for maximum here, three plays with 14 seconds. That's maximum. Maybe more like two, depending on what happens here on this one. First and 10. Man goes in motion far side. Eitner to throw. It's a throwback here to the near side. Pass is caught. Drew Ruddy, and he has nowhere to go, and that's going to probably end the half. He picked up three yards on the throwback, and Eden with the stop, and the half comes to an end. They had it 10 plays but gets stopped to end the first half. Entertaining first half of football. Our score as we move to the main stops of Northwest Ohio. Halftime show, Eden 27, Whiteford 14. A recap of the first half. We'll have some statistical numbers, scores around the area, and much more as we roll on on a Friday night here on B-Rock Sports. Camco Industries, with facilities located in West Unity, Ohio and Marincy, Michigan, has openings on all three shifts for production and assembly operators. We manufacture interior plastic products for the automotive industry. As an operator, you will be required to visually inspect, trim, assemble, and pack parts, as well as label containers. You must be able to pass an entry-level test and a substance abuse test. 
Camco also has openings for shipping associates, material handlers, and production leads. Camco offers a complete benefit package. If you would like to join our team, please complete an application online at www.kumi-na.com or in person at Camco, 1001 East Jackson Street, West Unity, Ohio, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. All rehires will be considered for employment. Harvest is here and you don't want to cook? Make it a pizza night. Give us a call at 419-272-2452. Ask about our great weekly and weekend specials. Here at Eden Pizza, we strive to have the freshest buns, pizza dough, and produce. Eden Pizza, located in downtown Eden. The more your life changes, the more your insurance needs change. See Danielle Van Atta of Danielle Van Atta Agency today. She can conduct a free personal insurance review to help you determine how much and what type of coverage is right for you with no costly gaps or overlaps. Interested? Phone Danielle Van Atta today at 419-636-0408. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Starks Plumbing and Heating Services helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Starks Plumbing and Heating Services and see how soon you can get a Lennox home comfort system that will help improve your health and your mood. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call us today at 1-800-329-4040 or visit us at StarksPHS.com. Um. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back out here to Leanne Field in Eat. We are having way too much fun here on a Friday night. Uh, but this is the place that we choose to be every week, my good friend. Yeah. And we see family and friends and good friends from all over every week. And I hope people hear excitement and energy and enthusiasm every week, even when we have blowout games. We love our jobs on a Friday night. We love this one tonight. Before we dive into any statistics, Mike Bum, I don't want to talk about anything second half yet. I just want to talk about your overall observations. Uh, was it what you expected? Were there any things that might have been through you for a little bit of a loop in the first half? I guess overall impressions from both sides, Eden and Whiteford. Uh, offenses rule the day. Defense is struggling to stop the other offense. What separates this game right now is Eaton's got one turnover when Whiteford was driving, the fumbled on the jet sweep. And then, of course, uh, the, the one turnover on stoppage that they had on downs. Both teams have stopped each other one time. Eaton's punted once. That was because of a penalty. Yep. So it wasn't really a, a natural stop, if you will. Eaton's had one natural stop uh, down here when Whiteford was traveling and, of course, the turnover. And I think that's the difference. 27-14. We'll have more scoring in the second half. Whiteford gets the ball to start off. That first possession or that first series with Whiteford getting the ball out of the half is going to go a long way towards deciding who's going to win this football game. Let's go ahead. I'll, I'll give you a little time. Yeah. Catch your breath to uh, get some numbers uh, brought to our listeners. I'm going to talk to a little talk to everybody a little bit about the drives and the scoring in that first half. Eaton took the opening kickoff impressive start to this game 13 plays 65 yards finished off by a kyler sap eight yard td run and eden led seven to nothing whiteford would come back and do so impressively and in a hurry just a two play 75 yard drive on the second snap for the bobcats trent neitner went 73 yards for the score they would get the two point try and they led eight seven eden would go four and out and whiteford would go uh, uh, on another drive, this one a little more sustained, eight plays, 59 yards. Trey Eitner uh, threw to Mason DeBar in the end zone using that 6-4 frame. They missed the two-point attempt, and it was 14-7 Eden. That would do it for the Whiteford scoring. 20 unanswered by the Bombers. Kyler Sapp to Kendall Briggle, 17-yard TD pass to finish off a seven-play 57-yard drive. That tied the game at 14. Whiteford would turn it over on a fumble. Eden would cash in. Nine plays, 67 yards. Kyler Sapp to Max Radeball on a 42-yard strike. 21-14 Eden. Whiteford would give it up on downs after a good drive. Eden with a stop at the 22. They'd take over there. A dozen plays, 68 yards. Sapp would find Cohen Halbert for a 13-yard TD pass. Kyler's third touchdown pass of the night. Eden uh, would have the try blocked, and it stays 
14, Eden with the lead. We're going to take a short break. Foz can come back and tell us some stats from the first half as we roll on on our main stops. Halftime show on B-Rock Sports. When the time comes for you to buy or sell a home, you need a realtor who is on your team. Someone who will coach you through the buying and selling process and outline the strategy for you to have a successful transaction. That someone is Misty King from Amerimade Realty. Misty has been a team player in the real estate industry for 23 years and has an award-winning reputation for getting good results. The Amerimade Realty team is also a top-ranking team and together they'll help you make a smooth move to your new home. So when it's time to buy or sell, give Misty King and the Amerimade team a call at 419-633-4997 or visit them on the web at amerimadehomes.com. Your friends at your neighborhood Eden Farmers Co-op Country Store would like to invite you to stop in at the Eden, Montpelier, and Edgerton stores to check out their complete line of pet supplies, animal feed, and outdoor products. Their friendly, knowledgeable staff is ready to answer all of your questions concerning their complete line of Kalmbach, Land O'Lakes, and much, much more. For your convenience, your purchase can be carried to your vehicle by one of their employees. Be sure to stop by soon and see them at your hometown country store. They Eden Farmers Co-op. Andy Briggle, Mike Bum, numbers, Fozzie Bear from the first half. Yeah, let's start off with Whiteford right now. Trey Eitenauer, he's been pretty good. 10 for 14 tonight, 130 yards, one touchdown pass, six-yard TD <laughs> to Mason DeBar. Rushing the football for the uh, Whiteford Bobcats, excuse me. Breck Reddy carried the ball five times for 20 yards. Trent Nightnare, he had the one long 73-yard touchdown run. He's carried the ball also five times for 94 yards for the Bobcats. Uh, total offense, 148 yards of total offense that we have for White for receiving the ball. We'll spread it around here and talk about a couple wide receivers. Mason DeBear, he's got one touchdown catch, two catches, 35 yards. Breck Reddy's got one catch for 34 yards. And Drew Reddy's got two catches for 16 yards to lead the Bobcats. For the Eden Bombers, these stats are going to blow your mind. I'm just going to start off with the punch line right now. We've only played a half, people. 308 yards of total offense for Eden against a very, very good Whiteford team. How about Kyler Sapp? If you haven't heard about him, you've been living in a cave. I'll tell you something, he's pretty special. Right now, we're talking first half numbers. Passing the football, he's 22 for 32. 22 for 32 for 237 yards. He's got an 11-yard touchdown pass to Briggle. He's got a 42-yard pass to Rada Ball. He's also ran for a touchdown. Uh, Kyler Sapp's been just outstanding tonight. Rushing the football, you guessed it, Kyler Sapp as well. He's ran the ball 11 times for 68 yards to lead the Bombers. Catching the football, spreading it all around. A lot of really good wide receivers for the Bombers. Max Radeball's got three catches for 60 yards. Kendall Briggle's been everywhere. Eight catches already for 91 yards. Coleman Holbert's caught the ball five times. Briggs Gallahue's got a catch. Eli Dickman's got two. Colton Willis has got four catches for 36 yards. Again, 237 yards in the air for the Bombers right now. And as I said, 308 yards of total offense, and we're only in the first half against a really good football team in the Whiteford Bobcats. And that's the number. Those are the numbers from our main stops of Northwest Ohio halftime show. 27-14, Eden with the lead on Whiteford. We'll roll on with more. We're going to step aside, take a short break. Our Ben Murray will check out what's happening around Northwest Ohio and any baseball updates to pass along as well. We'll be back and talk computer points then after Ben's report. All that and more. Week 5 of high school football, Eaton up 27-14. Newcomers Schaefer, Spangler, and Brininger have served Northwest Ohio for over 120 years. They provide a full range of legal services, including real estate transactions, estate planning and trust administration, elder law, family law, business planning and litigation, personal injury, workers' comp, criminal and traffic defense, and more. Newcomers Schaefer, Spangler, and Brininger also supports the athletes in schools in Northwest Ohio and wish them the best of luck in this game. It's a milestone moment at Midwest Community Federal Credit Union. For seven decades, we've been your financial partner, helping you achieve your dreams and secure your future. Here's to the next 70 years and beyond. 
a future where our communities thrive and Midwest Community continues to be your partner in success. With a check of your halftime scoreboard update for week five of high school football presented by the main stops of Northwest Ohio, the best stop is a main stop. I'm Ben Murray reporting. From Eden at halftime at Lee Ann Field with Andy and Mike, it is it, it, it is Eden on top of Whiteford, Michigan, 27-2-14. Checking in the GMC, at last check it was Wayne Trace over Edgerton, 6-0. Hicksville was leading Antwerp 15-6. At last check there. Start of the third quarter, it is, it is Fairview over to Nora, 28-7. Also, Paulding over Ayersville, 21 to nothing. In the end of the OAL, at the end of three. Excuse me, at the start of the third quarter, it is Patrick Henry over Brian, 39. Uh, excuse me, that is at the end of three. It is Patrick Henry over Brian, 39 to nothing on our sister station on Q96.5. At, at halftime, Liberty Center over Swanton, 56 to nothing. Delta over Archbold at half, 17 to seven. At the end of three, it is Wasion over Delta, uh, excuse me, Wasion over Evergreen, seven to three. In the, those are all of the scores in the NWOAL. Checking in the WBL at half, it is Defiance over Shawnee, 36 to seven. Wapakoneta over Van Wert, 21 to seven. St. Mary's over Ottawa Glandor, 15 to six. Salina over Kenton, 21 to 14. Also in the W, also in the WBL, it is it is um, Elida over Bath, 35 to 28. In other games to pass along to you, it is North Central over Rich over Richmond Heights, 33 to six. In the third quarter, it is Petersburg Summerfield over Hilltop, seven to six. And at halftime, Napoleon over Springfield at last check, 33 to seven. In eight man football. With three minutes to go in the third quarter at last check, it was Holgate over Danbury, 42 to nothing. Quick check in Major League Baseball. Cleveland is playing St. Louis tonight. It was, it was Cleveland leading St. Louis this evening at last check. Cleveland was leading St. Louis last check. They are still scoreless, still, excuse me, still scoreless in the top of the third at 0-0. That is Cleveland and St. Louis. I will send it back out to Andy and Mike in Eden to Leanne Field after these commercial messages. This has been our check of your Week 5 halftime and other score updates. Present a Week 5 high school football scores presented by the main stops of Northwest Ohio. The best stop is a main stop in Northwest Ohio. For B-Rock Sports, I'm Ben Murray reporting. Stay with us. Hi, this is Mackenzie Now with Andrews O'Neill and Lowe Insurance Agency. Life is full of unexpected moments. At Andrews O'Neill and Lowe, we believe in protecting what matters most, your loved ones. With our life insurance solutions, you can ensure that your family is financially secure no matter what the future holds. Partnering with Auto Owners Insurance, we offer plans that provide peace of mind and protection your family deserves. With Auto Owners Insurance by your side, you can trust that your family is covered when hard times come. Visit andrewsoneillandlowe.com or call us today. Because protecting your loved ones is our top priority. Are you in need of quality furniture and appliances? Look no further than DirectLink Appliance and Furniture. With Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid Appliances, and Ashley Furniture, and Jamison Mattresses, and new to the store, Molecule Mattresses. Made right in Auburn, Indiana. You'll find everything you need for your home. Plus, our trained technicians provide service to all makes and models of appliances. With unbeatable prices and impeccable customer service, DirectLink Appliance and Furniture is your one-stop shop for all your home needs. Don't wait. Shop DirectLink Appliance and Furniture today. Welcome back out here. The main stops in Northwest Ohio. Halftime show rolls on here tonight. I want to, uh, well, first of all, before we get into the computer points, we do have a few uh, week four notes that I wanted to pass along that made it for Northwest Ohio. These are notes that they scan the state, uh, but worth noting on a couple of instances. A couple of them are a little bit outside our normal coverage area, but still in the Northwest District. Freshman quarterback Landon Eckleberry. Uh, is the replacement for Ryan Montgomery at Finley. Ryan okay. sees in, of course, he's a Georgia commit yep. and tore up his knee in uh, week number one, a four-star recruit. Echo Berry, guess what he did uh, in that season-ending injury when he came back and played, has played in a game since then? He broke uh, Montgomery's single-game passing record through for 562 last week at Clay. He broke, uh, actually it was Ben Roethlisberger's single game record uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. He broke Montgomery's, and Montgomery last year broke Ben Roethlisberger's single-game record uh, when he threw for 491 in a win over Sylvania. Eckleberry, 29 of 42 for the 562 and five TD passes. So I think they have found a pretty good replacement. I know he's still just a freshman, but that's a pretty good uh, uh, number and statistic and uh, obviously a huge ceiling for him. Uh, meanwhile, in that same game, despite what happened there, the night belonged to Clay and Pittsburgh recruit Mason Heinschel. He's a 6'2", 210-pound senior. He generated 482 yards of total offense, leading Clay to the 54-40 win over Finley, one of the games of the year. Heinschel threw for 295 and three touchdowns and rushed for 187 and a couple of touchdowns. And he even punted in that game a 60-yarder. Wow. That's a pretty dynamic game all around, team and individually speaking, from just a week ago. Ottawa Glandorf head coach Ken Schreiner joined the 200 win club last week when OG won over Elida 28-7. He's in his 29th season overall. So just a couple of quick notes there. Now, let's jump into the computer points. We start right here, Division 7, Region 26. Long way to go. Top 16 make it, of course. Right now, Columbus Grove is the number one seed. Uh, they are comfortably ahead of Eden, who is number two right now. Also, in that division, I'm just going to mention our immediate local teams and then mention others. I want to get your read on it. Edgerton is a 12 seed. Last we heard, losing by two scores tonight. Antwerp was the 15 seed. And last we heard, they were down to Hicksville, although I didn't hear Ben's scoreboard, so a couple of those could have changed. Here are some other schools. We mentioned Groves in there. Arlington, Mohawk, Calvert, Lima Central Catholic, Ada, Macomb, Gibsonburg, Pandora, Gilboa, Lipsick, among the other teams. Listen, Great Division 7, Region you 26. You better believe it is. And if you're Eden, you want to collect as many computer points as you know. everybody wants to do that. But really stay in that two and three slot so you can avoid some of those heavy hitters, especially and Columbus here. Grove, and play here for a couple games. You don't want to play Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove is really good. So stay away from them uh, as, far, as long as you possibly can. But... Uh, you're right. That is a, it's a loaded Division 7. Divi By the way, Tenora is making a game of it. 28-21 Fairview uh, leading Tenora still in that GMC collision. In Division 6, Region 22, Ottawa Hills is the number two team. Paulding is the seven seed. Patrick Henry an eight. Fairview a 10. Evergreen a 12. Crestview the 14 seed. Tenora right now is a 19 on the outside look. And some other teams, Montpelier lost to Hopewell Loudon last year. They're the number one seed again. Bluffton, Spencerville, Huron, Van Buren, Seneca East among the other teams in that region. I understand they're bigger schools, and I understand they'd have a better record against the Division 7 if you put them head-to-head. -head. But I believe Division 7 uh, is, is a and that region is much more competitive and more difficult than Division 6. Okay. Division 5, Region 18. Liberty Center is the three Again, schedule-induced. They yeah. played some bad teams. Delta's the four. Archibald is the 12 right now. Some other teams. Oak Harbor is number one in that region mm -hmm. in the first computer points. Uh, Worcester Triway, Eastwood, Milan Edison, Genoa, Liberty Benton, uh, Lake, some of the other teams in the top 16 in Division 5, Region 18. Yeah, I don't know much about some of those teams outside the NWAL. I do believe the NWAL is the weakest maybe arguably ever been, or at least in recent history, outside of Liberty Center. Um, I don't think you have anybody that can uh, win more than a game or two in the comp, and, and that's probably even being generous. I, I don't know if anybody in the NWL outside of Liberty Center, Liberty, maybe a game, uh, somebody, but Liberty Center is the only one. Patrick Henry up 39 nothing on Bryan in the third quarter. Napoleon's 13 in Division 4, Region 14. Some of the teams there are Perkins, uh, Shelby, Ontario, Clyde, Galleon, Otsego, and Bellevue. And then up in Division 3, Region 10, uh, Defiance is tied for ninth. And now you're talking uh, Cleveland Benedictine, number one, and then Toledo Central Catholic, Rocky River. Mommy's off to a fantastic hey, start. Hey, last two years. Turnarounds. He brought uh, the hometown boy back and is coaching up there, Evan Hartner, and do, doing a fantastic doing a great job. job. Yeah. That P.H. Bryan game has gone to the fourth quarter, by the way, because they are in a running clock game. want to ask you some thoughts now here on this second half, Mike Bum. Yeah. Let's start with uh, let's start with Whiteford. They're the team down two scores. Thoughts on how they come back and win this game? Business as usual. You can't change who you are. 
ball control offense. You're down two scores. I think this first possession that they have is critical. If they go down and score, obviously they're only down by a six-point six point margin because he didn't miss the extra point. And now it's anybody's game because I think there's a lot of offense on both sides that are left to be had. Actually, it would be either seven or five because they go for two, remember? Okay, very good point. Yes, seven or five points. So this is critical. Um, you made a great point earlier. The way that Eden plays, not so much hurry up, but they're always in the shotgun. And with that, the defensive linemen have to line up put their hand on the ground and rush 10 yards or about every single play and that's a big deal if you're not getting to the quarterback they've had one sack one sack and that of course was the bear sack against kyler Sapp. but you're not getting paid for all your effort as you're rushing and you start to see that in the fourth quarter and then Sapp's going to get less and less pressure at least that's what we've seen in the past against teams who have played Eden. so conditioning and fatigue is going to going to play into this too so uh lots lots of football to be had obviously even with the two score lead right now is in good shape but uh, whiteford coming out with the ball here can make things interesting in a hurry what did uh and by the way even more breathing room now it looks like wayne trace is going to uh they are putting one on edgerton 19 nothing Wayne Trace with seven and a half to play in that game as they add to the lead. Holgate leads Danbury an eight-man, 56 to nothing. How about the Bombers? Yeah. Adjustments, and how do they put this away and get to 5-0? and oh? Not so sure there needs to be any adjustments. Defensively, what are you going to do? You're going to put as many people in the box as you can because it's foot-to-foot -foot splits by Whiteford. They're going to pin you, and they're going to pull, and they're going to counter you. So with that, you do have to commit a lot of people to the run. Herein lies the problem with that. You're committing so many people that Trent Neitenayer's had a field day, of, or Trey Neitenayer, excuse me, of people running right by the defensive secondary because they're so focused on the run that he's had an outstanding game throwing the football. But schematically, there's not much you can do because you can't just line up and let Whiteford get seven and eight yards of a crack. So uh, I think it's more of effort, get your guys rolling. You know, tell them that, you know, the, emphasize how important it is to re, your defensive lineman to recreate the line of scrimmage and disrupt the pulling backside guard and tackles when they come and just play good, solid defense on top of that and try to get as many stops as you can and, and play into your offense, which has been outstanding. Great points. And our first final of the night with that running clock, Patrick Henry shuts out Brian 39 to nothing. The score there. Delta up 17 7 on Archibald. How do they have a game that's over already, Ange, and we're not even starting the second half yet? How many pass attempts does Kyler have tonight? He's got 32 of them. There you go. There's, that's Good part point. of it. You have some incomplete <laughs> passes, and that happens. Our halftime show tonight brought to you by the main stops of Northwest Ohio. The best stop is always a main stop. I have a baseball question for yeah. you. Did you hear the history last night? Shohei Otani. 50-50 no. club. Okay. 50 homers. Yep. 50 stolen bases. Yep. Never been done. Actually, it's 51-51 now. Okay. There is an argument to be made that on that night that he went 51-51. Again, no other player has done it. He had the greatest individual night in baseball history. Six for six, 10 RBIs. Wow. 17 total bases. Does that equate on a night where you become the first 50 as the greatest individual night, in your opinion, in baseball How history? How could it not be? I've never heard of anything like well, that. I mean, you, you those are Mike Bum Little League numbers, but this is right. doing it at the professional level. Is that why he's making $700 million? <laughs> yeah, well, and that's deferred. He's not making that money this year. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, geez, Louise, that's, he's special, isn't he? What is this contract? I it it is. It's a $700 million yeah, deal, but they deferred most of it. So this year he's technically making like $7 million. Okay. They'll be paying a lot of it on the back end. So he's got the Barry uh, ben or Bob Bobby Benilla contract where he's Somewhere 50 simple, years yeah. from now he's still going to yep. get paid? Yep. Gotcha. But L.A. is making – they've already – they said – I read an article where that contract's already been paid with all of his marketing that has is been that done. Right? Now. It's already paid for. So L.A. Uh, – that, is that Yankees number one and L.A. Dodgers two? Probably? Correct. Yep. All uh, right, we're underway here in the second half. A great opening kickoff that's going to come all the way out near midfield. Drew Ruddy didn't look like he had much and then found a crease and poor tackling by Eden. And you look at it, and boom, Whiteford's at near midfield at the 47. And only nine seconds in the second half have been burned. So, again, lots can happen here. Coach Teakin, business as usual, don't need to change the game plan. 
So it'll be a first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. 27-14 Eden just starting the second half here on WBNO FM. Brian, double wing look, one running back, double tight set. One of them comes in motion. It's Breck Ruddy on the counter give. He powers his way for about three out to the 49-yard line. He'll be brought down on the play by Blake Baker, a 5'11 senior for Eden. Second down and seven for Whiteford. They move left to right in this third quarter. Eden 27, Whiteford 14. Here on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Second down and seven to go. Again, double tight set, one running back. Drew Ruddy is the lone setback. It'll be a counter handoff to Trent Neitner and great penetration by Eden that time. Knifing through to make the play defensively was Braden Worley and it'll be third and long. Now if you're Eden, this is exactly where you want to get this ball control style white for team. Third down and long. Now you can tell your safeties to relax a little bit, play too high coverage, not so concerned with the run, just don't get beat over top. Third and eight for Whiteford back near their own 48 yard line third and eight they'll go double wing again Drew Ruddy is the only running back one receiver to the left side handoff on a sweep and Trent Knightnire is into the secondary he'll have a first down on third down and eight as he rumbles down to the 42 yard line He'll get 10 on the third and eight, and the drive stays alive. Yeah, disappointing if you're a Bomber fan. Just a simple jet sweep. And Whiteford did a nice job of pinning the defensive end down on Eden and had, the, had space on the end there to get 10-yard gain. Foz, you touched on how this is a uh, critical drive for Whiteford. Good start, a good-looking drive here. Good. Long way to go. First and 10 at the 43 of Eden. Delta 24, Archbold 14, that game in the second half. First and 10, Whiteford at the Eden 43. Double wing, one running back, one receiver to the right. Man goes in motion. They'll play action to him and a rollout for Trey Eitner. Eitner throws over the middle. Trent Eitner, his cousin with the grab, inside the 35. Wrestled down at the 32-yard line. He'll be brought down by Carter Stanky and going to have 11 and a first down. First and 10, Whiteford at the 32 of Eden. Hash mark near side. You're listening to Week 5 football here on WBNO FM. Brian. Bombers with a two-score lead at 27-14. A couple of state-ranked teams. Third meeting all time. They split the first two. Whiteford winning last year. Eden back in 2021. Coming in motion. Now Eden jumped across. Cohen Halbert into the neutral zone. And a five-yard penalty now. It'll be first and five. Final score, Wasion seven, Evergreen three. Ooh. So that will that penalty mark off will bring Whiteford to the 27-yard line. First and five for Whiteford. Nine and change to play. Third quarter. It's the opening drive of the second half. Double wing, one running back behind Trey Eitner. He'll bring a man in motion. They'll fake the jet sweep. Trey steps up, fires high, incomplete. Kyler Sapp, really good coverage that time. The intended target was Chevy Alexander. First time he's been targeted tonight. Six foot, 205 pound junior. It's incomplete, and it'll be second and five. Good job of keeping contained that time by Eden, number 57. The defensive end, Blake Baker, called his name on a couple different times of games we've had Eden already this, uh, this year. Did a nice job of keeping Eden there in the pocket, then elevating, making it a difficult throw. Second down and five, Bobcats at the Eden 27. Double wing look, one running back again, receiver to the left. Man comes in motion. They'll go jet sweep give this time. Breck Ruddy trying to get to the outside. Ruddy is going to be slammed out of bounds. Great open field tackle by Kyler Sapp, and they're going to say yeah. extracurriculars at the end, and that's going to be teen and add to the end of the run. Yeah, big play there, and evidently we were like, shielded. Yeah, I can't. I, I, didn't I, see. I, I don't feel comfortable uh, having strong convictions on it. I just didn't see it. Kyler Sapp made contact inbounds. Yeah. It continued on, but it was, again, Ruddy is a strong back who's trying to go forward, and, and evidently the official must have thought that he didn't release 
in time on that time. And that's going to be a critical penalty against the Bombers. Well, you couldn't have scripted it any better if you're a Whiteford fan this third quarter. That 15-yard penalty will take Whiteford down to the 11. I'm with you. That tackle began inbounds. It was a form tackle. So unless something that we were completely shielded from happened, and I doubt that from the looks of it, then um, maybe Todd Teakin stole the penalty because, remember, he was he was uh, barking at the officials on a couple of occasions where he thought maybe some uh, extra action should have been called against Eden or uh, a couple of penalties that he was arguing in his favor. Now the officials have a timeout and speaking with Whiteford on a first and 10 at the 11. As the clock stops at 848, I am totally unaware what this discussion's about well I, you know <laughs> i think i got an idea but i don't want to say in case i'm wrong well give me a, let's all right let's preface it all this is mike bum with a <laughs> uh, educated guess what's your educated guess uh, i i think the people holding the, the 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 chains and the sticks are barking a little bit and the uh from Eden and the Whiteford coaching staff doesn't like it, and they told the officials because you're not supposed to speak if you're holding the chains. <laughs> well, maybe I'm wrong. Well, and I apologize if I am. Well, that's still a wonderful, <laughs> educated guess, and you may be right. That's that's a run of eight on first and ten at the 11 yard line. And that's just a little FYI. If you're holding chains, you can't. You're not supposed to bark. If you're at a scores table in a volleyball or basketball game, you're not supposed to cheer and bark. I see it sometimes happen, but you're not supposed to. Hey, how about this drive by Whiteford? Second. Down down and two. This will be the eighth play of the drive coming up. They have a second and two at the three-yard line, trying to make this a one-score game. Double wing, one running back on second and two at the three. Handoff up the middle. Touchdown, Drew Ruddy. And Whiteford has sliced it. And we have a flag. Hold on. Wipe it away. It's going to go against Whiteford. So no touchdown. It's going to be a holding penalty. Yeah, I didn't see that. No, not a holding. It's going to be a uh, false start. False start. That new. makes Beg your more pardon. sense, yeah. That's huge. So second and seven back at the eight. Take the points off the board. 8.08 to go, third quarter. 27-14 Eden. But Whiteford on the doorstep here on the initial drive of the second half. Second and seven, Bobcats at the Bombers' eight. Moving left to right, ball middle of the field. Play clock, plenty of time on it, down at 11. <laughs> Drew Ruddy, a running back. Wing on either side, Eitner and Breck Ruddy. Breck comes in motion. Roll out, Trey Eitner throws in the flat. Pass is caught. Breck Ruddy will waltz into the end zone, and this time the touchdown will stand. No flags. Now we have a one-score game. Nice little sprint out there by Trey Eitner, hitting Ruddy right in stride. And as you said, Angie... We got ourselves another ball game here. Eight yards on the scoring strike. Trey Eitner getting his second TD pass of the night. And now a 27-20 game. They'll go for two to try to make it a five-point game. Wayne Trace, 26. Edgerton, zero. Liberty up 63 to nothing on Swanton. That's just a couple of minutes left from going final there. And Eitner hit as he was trying to sprint out, busting through on a blitz that time to break it up was Braden Worley. New score on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. 8.02 mark of the third quarter, Eden 27, Whiteford 20 on V Rock Sports. Good luck tonight to all the area athletes. Hard quality work means a lot to an athlete and to everyone at Peltz Lumber Company in Montpelier and Pioneer. Peltz is in the business of working hard for you. Whether you need something as simple as a 2x4 or all the materials for your new home or pole barn, Peltz Lumber has what you need and will deliver it to you in a timely fashion. Hard work and quality materials is what you'll find at Peltz. And hard work on the field and in practices are what makes these area teams great. Good luck tonight from Peltz Lumber Company in Montpelier and Pioneer. Building for a new generation. A couple of NWAL scores. It's now Liberty Center 70 and Swanton nothing. And Archibald has hit on a big TD pass. L under eight to go. Delta 24, Archibald 21. New game here, 27-20. Eden with the lead. Great opening drive that covered eight plays and 54 yards. Finished with the Trey Eitner to Breck Ruddy TD pass. 
And now the Bombers will get their first offensive touch here the second half. Remember now, if you're just joining us, a couple of kicks, whether it's been by design or mistake, but either way, a couple of kicks by Trey Eitner have gone out of bounds. Another return, the one return that they've had, Caden Stance had a decent return. This is going to be kicked away on the far side from Dickman and will spin out of bounds on that far sideline. Next week, Foz and I will be at Hopi Krause Field in Montpelier, Eden and Montpelier, in the first TAC game of the year for either team. Boy, you hit the nail on the head, too. If the Toledo Area Athletic Conference doesn't have something up their sleeve, if there isn't something proactive, yeah. that league is on life support. Yeah, and they've, they've been very slow to react, I think, to some opportunities, uh, the leadership, the schools. Uh, they've got some opportunities, and, and some other schools, I think it would benefit them to get into the TAC, too. So it's a two-way fold there. But I think a Swanton has got to look at getting into the TAC, and that means the community is going to have to understand that maybe it's time, and, and I think they've been slow to react, thinking that Swanton is, is the Swanton of the 80s and 70s that we, we grew up watching. It, it just simply isn't at this stage. And then, of course, you've got the team we're looking at right here, a very good football team who's had to travel so much because a lot of the teams that they normally play are an eight-man. So a couple opportunities there, at least some schools to look at that would solidify that conference. Meanwhile, while Bummer was talking, a lot happened on a kick out of bounds. Eden wants him to kick it over, and we had uh, personal fouls that were offsetting one on each team. So through all of that, a kickoff now five yards back. Eden wants a chance at a return here and hopes they can get a little better field position than their own 35. 27-20, Eden with the lead. First possession of the second half coming up for the Bombers. I was like, why are we teeing it up at the 40? It's a five-yard kick out of bounds, so this has to happen at the 35, and it is. Eden coming in at 4-0. Whiteford 2 and 1. Third meeting all time between these two. A, a series born out of COVID-19. They both lost games back in 2021, so why not play each other? They did. That was a classic matchup that night. Last year it was all Whiteford. Here's the return, 25-30. 35, they'll gain a yard on that denying or uh, uh, deciding to make them re-kick again. Connor Beasley tripping stands up so instead of their own 35 it's their own 36 yard line by the way do you like the new alignment on the nfl kickoffs no no i interest. hate everything about it okay that's you fair. like it i don't have an opinion really i'm gonna be quite honest with uh, you i have no opinion I, you know, on it's, it. i don't it's, that's not i have too many other uh, quibbles with the nfl and protection of the quarterbacks and other yeah, stuff too. that i'm too. too and quarterbacks that played in the league would tell you that they have some quibbles yeah. two by two look here as they fire on their first but. set of downs and it's uh, fired wide and incomplete intended for rate of ball but don't mess with the nfl because it's a machine it's a machine if you mess with the nfl they will win because people love it <laughs> yeah you're right about that yeah. Travis Cooper has the Defiance Bulldogs in the win column again, 43-7 over Shawnee. Here it is 27-20. Eden with the lead. We are at the 7.50 mark of the third quarter. Second and 10 bombers. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. Sap looks, looks, fires. A little curl route. Caught by Radeball. Look out. 40, 45-50. Radeball to the 40 and more. 35-30, 25-20, 10-5. What down? First and goal at the two-yard line. 62 yards on the pass play, and the Bombers are attempting a quick answer. Yeah. Really just an intermediate dig route there right underneath the linebackers. Rated ball caught the ball and then turned to the outside, and boy, did he turn on the burners. First and goal at the two-yard line. Hash mark far side. 27-20, Eden attempting to add to the lead here. Three, make it four receivers to the left, one receiver right. Sap, quarterback draw, and Whiteford was ready. They stuck him in the hole. He continued to fight, didn't get there. Shy of the end zone. Great job by the defense, and the first man there was Mason DeBar. So it'll be second and goal at the two-yard line.
clock. Clock has momentarily stopped. stopped. Oh, Tyler lost his helmet, so he's got to come out of play. So getting the snap will be, unless Bob Olin wants to take a timeout, but in a game like this, pressure. Yeah, but I think you do take the timeout because every scoring. They're going to go wildcat. So this is a formation that we've seen before. It's going to be a wildcat look and a straight snap and nothing going for Cohen Halbert. He'll get maybe to the line of scrimmage before Trenton Eitner brings him down. And now it'll be third and goal as Sapp comes back out there after getting the helmet readjusted. Third and goal back near the two-yard line. Make it the three-yard line. So he lost one. Third and goal at the three. Six and a half to go. 27-20. We're in the third quarter. Eden with the lead. Five wide look. Three to the right. Two to the left. Sapp throws. Back of the end zone. Stance up. Grabs it. Is he inbounds or out of bounds? Incomplete. Back of the end zone, Andy. We couldn't tell what it was. It was a little flag route. So it it looks like Stance, the first time he's been targeted, he's a punt return specialist, makes a great grab, but the official saw the defender push Stance out of bounds in the back of the end zone calling an incomplete. We got a fourth down and three situation. Fourth and goal for Eden. Up 27-20. Two receivers left. Three receivers to the right. Fourth and goal at the three. Sapp throws. Got a man open. Touchdown. Cohen Halbert. Falling backwards. Was open in the front far corner. And on fourth and goal, Eden cashes in and they have a two-score lead. That'll be the fourth TD pass of the night for Sapp. Well, not only does he have four TD passes, he's also ran for one. And also has 294 unofficial yards through the air. And Bob Olin going to go for two here, up 33-20. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Low snap, it's on the turf. Sapp picks it up. Now things in the middle of the field, it's caught! Kendall Briggle running away from Breck Ruddy. Great heads up play by Sapp. He didn't panic, Foz, and he made the play for the two point conversion. Kept his eyes up. There was pressure on him. It was a bad snap. Delivered at the last second. Quick timeout. 6.19 to go. Third quarter. Bombers 35. And Whiteford 20. Newcomers Schaefer, Spangler, and Brininger have served Northwest Ohio for over 120 years. They provide a full range of legal services, including real estate transactions, estate planning and trust administration, elder law, family law, business planning and litigation, personal injury, workers' comp, criminal and traffic defense, and more. Newcomers Schaefer, Spangler, and Brininger also supports the athletes in schools in Northwest Ohio and wish them the best of luck in this game. Got a uh, score here, update at 35-20 in ours. But also a big congratulations going out. Patrick Henry's win over Brian tonight, Foz. Are you ready for this? Yeah. With the win, head coach Bill Inselman becomes the NWOAL's all-time winningest head coach. It was Bill Inselman's 177th NWOAL win. Is that right? I didn't know that. Uh, did he, Charles Buckemeyer? Who did he beat? Uh, Downey? Ben, if you can find out who he eclipsed, maybe find that on Twitter I'm going to say Charles Buckemeyer from Napoleon. Okay. I don't know. But congratulations to Bill Inselman. Yeah, absolutely. So the Bombers with a terrific answer. And a kick now from Eden that will just trickle out of bounds. I don't know if I've ever seen so many kicks kicked out of bounds in a contest between two good teams as I have tonight. We've had more kicks out of bounds than we've had inbounds on our kickoffs. (laughs) So it is a, let's see, we've had some accepted. We've had some re-kicked tonight. And it looks like Whiteford is content to take the possession here. 6.19 6.19 left in this one in the third quarter. He passed Rex Lindgren. Oh, Lindgren, of course. Thanks. Of course. Thanks, Wheels. Appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> 
35 to 20. Still half of the third quarter to go. Settle in. We thought high scoring at the beginning of the night, and this has lived up to the billing. Breck Ruddy on a sweep to the far side. He's across the 35, out near the 40. Tackle is made by Parker Kelly. He got four. It'll be second down and six. Ruddy's got 30 yards so far on eight carries. Second down and six coming up. And this is a white for team under Coach Teakin has only lost three games in three years, and two of those were in state championship games. Counter handoff coming back into the teeth of that Eden defense from the left to the right side. He got about three or four more. Blake Baker, another stop. Foz with a third quarter wave off. So uh, this is what happens when uh, you get tight games. The Foz is interested in that. Yeah, right, right. Third and one coming up from the 43-yard line. Five minutes to go in this one, in the third quarter of this one. 35-20, uh, Eden with the lead on third and a long one. And big hole, Trent Knight now. It might be coming back. This is a one that could go the distance. It's going to be close. 10-5 down at the two, but it might all be for naught. On third and two at the 43, that flag was thrown immediately, and nobody yeah. from Whiteford is heading downfield. No, it was right there in the either clip zone or, or holding zone there. So that's going to come back, and if you're a Whiteford fan, that's disappointing because that really puts you, that big chunk play, puts you on the one-yard line right back into the ball game and, and this is a big deal it's a chop block yeah now what's a chop block that's when the blocker has engaged the defender and then a secondary blocker comes in and hits the defender in the leg area that's what a chop block is and it just negated a gigantic 56 yard run obviously that's for player safety Penalty will bring Whiteford back to the 43, and now a flag that's going on the sideline. Todd Teakin, too much. He tried to get his point across on that far sideline and engaged the crew a little too much. Yeah. And counted off at more yardage going against the Bobcats. Well, it's a sideline. Well, uh, hold on a second. That was a sideline warning. They didn't call it unsportsmanlike. So that's just a warning yeah. penalty. All right. It's all in the uh, how the official called that. If he called, if he got too verbally over the line and then it was an unsportsmanlike penalty, it would yeah. be 15 more. But as it stands now, it's a third down back at the 39, a third and six coming up. Trey Eitner on a play action. Throws. Got Trent Eitner. It's intercepted. Caden Stance took it away from Trent Knightner. Did a great job coming off his yeah. man. We can't hear anything in the booth up here. It's so loud. The fans are going crazy. But you're right, Caden Stance, again, a punt return specialist, had an opportunity to catch a touchdown pass last series. It was very close. This time does a great job of coming off of his man, Andy getting into the pathway of the other receiver and making a great interception. That's Eden's second turnover takeaway of the night. First, takeaway of the night. First and 10, Eden at the 44-yard line. Their own 44 moving right to left. Sap on a slant route. Pass is juggled, and did he hold on? Yes, he did at the 49-yard line. The sliding grab made by Colton Willis. A pickup of five, and it'll be second down and five from the 49. You know who Kyler Sap reminds me of? You said this at halftime. Yeah. Talk to our listeners a little bit about that. I tell you, what, he, he reminds me, if you're out there listening and you're, you're a fan of Northwest Ohio, Austin Schimmler, who was on that great Bryan team in 2012 when they went all to the regionals, about the same build, runs and passes similar. It, it reminds me of a clone of, of Schimmler. Five wide look on second and five. Sap under pressure. Look out from behind. DeMar came, and just as he was releasing it, and a flag thrown toward where that was coming. It was where Sap was firing the football, and DeMar was giving chase from behind. It, it came way from the middle of the field. 
must be a hold, but... Or did they feel like DeMar got him by the horse collar? Because he was up high trying to bring Kyler down on a sack attempt. It was second and five. It's a face mask on Whiteford. Yeah. Coach Teakins just kind of feeling like really everything's against him. You know, he has the long run called back and then a couple penalties back to back here. By the way, just to complete the Austin Schimler story, you mentioned 2012. Then that next year, 2013, that's when they had their classic with uh, Kenton in the... That was 2012, wasn't it? 12 was the loss to Tory Strock and Napoleon who's okay. here with us tonight. 2013. In yeah. the regional semi, and then the Kenton loss, I believe, in 2013. Here comes Holbert in motion to the near side. A pump that way, a step up in the pocket. Sap under duress, throws, pass caught. Reception made by Radabaugh near the 35. Slides down at the 33. Picks up 17 on the first and five. 3.47 to go, third quarter. 35-20, Eden. Bombers are 4-0. and oh. Bobcats are 2-1. and one. This drive becomes gigantic because if Eden can go up three scores, yeah. it's more of a grinded out Whiteford, although they do have yeah. one big play tonight. But generally speaking, it's a grinded out, and it's tough to come back that yeah. way when you're down three scores in the second half. It's a first and 10 at the 33-yard line as Eden has to replace a lineman. New lineman coming on is Devin Huffman, who is a junior. I don't know if it's an equipment issue or an injury that has forced out Trent Buck. He has stepped aside here to the sideline. First down and 10, Eden. Play clock now will get fired up. Game clock should get fired up. And here we go on a first and 10. Eden at the Whiteford 33-yard line. Three receivers go right, two receivers left, so an empty on first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Sap looking over to Bobble. A lot of of man-to-man now from Whiteford. Three-man rush, pressure coming up the middle. Good pass, far side, Dickman with a grab inside the 10, or inside the 20 at the 19, gain of 14. Now, Coach Teakin wants a pick play on that. It was a crossing rot, and he's going bonkers on the sideline. I, I, I would disagree with him. I think it was a good rub route, but I don't think it was a pick play, and that's what he's arguing. Whiteford has changed it up and went more man-to-man here in the second half. Well, and they have to. And they, they got, got to. And they got to come with maybe a little more pressure, yeah, too. Maybe, it, but, but Eden receivers are winning. They're winning battles, and Kyler Sapp's putting it on the money, and, and they're tough to beat when that's happening. They're, they're just winning those one-on-one battles. First and 10, Eden at the 20-yard line of Whiteford. Up 35-20, inside of three to go. A little mini rollout to the near side. Sap on the move, looks for the end zone, got rid of all wide open, touchdown! 20-yard strike, and Eden wow. pouring it on now here in the third. Wow. Second time, Sap to Radeball tonight. And that'll extend it to 41 to 20, Eden. And it looks as if the offense is going to stay out there to go for two. Archibald has the lead on Delta, 28-24, less than a minute to play in that one. Sapp will bring Holbert in motion to the far side of the field. Looking for two, Sapp. Coming near side, on the roll, into the end zone. The sliding grab is made for the two-point try. There is a penalty flag down. Hold on. The catch was made by Radeball, but there is a penalty, or by Dickman. There is a penalty flag back outside the 10-yard line. It's 43-20 as it stands right now. But Bob Olwen is in conversation with the head official tonight to see. I think it's going to stand, and then he'll, he's talking maybe about taking the penalty on the kick. This might be against Whiteford from the description that we were seeing. The try is good. Personal foul, roughing the passer. So it's going to be assessed on the kickoff. 43-20, Eden now in full control of this one. We'll step aside and be right back. 
Downtown Bryan, Ohio has become quite the shopping destination in the past few years, thanks in part to Elian's Boutique, the Maddox Men's Emporium, and Faith and Grace Baby Boutique. These incredible stores offer something for everyone, featuring men's and women's apparel, newborn and kids' apparel, maternity wear, specialty foods and drinks, barware, jewelry and accessories, giftable items, and much, much more. They're located on the east side of the square in downtown Bryan and open weekdays 10 to 6 and Saturdays 10 to 3. So come to downtown Bryan, Ohio and visit the Elian's family of stores for all your shopping needs. Four. Roughing the passer. So the roughing the passer penalty means Eden kicks at the 45-yard line. You know, if you're really feeling confident right now, this is a heck of a place to maybe think onside. Steal a possession and put it away. I, I, I don't know if that's that. <laughs> I, listen, you're up 23 points right now. Why give them even better field position than you need to? Uh, but, you, you know, if you're a Whiteford fan and Coach well, we've Seekin, seen, uh, Just a, real quick, yeah. we've seen so many possessions go out of bounds that if yeah. you kick one here, then you gain in 10 yards. Yeah, that's well, good I mean, point. there's been a ton but, of them tonight. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're not, you're not gaining a whole lot kicking a deep, at least not in this game. But it just, if you're, you know, Todd Teakin and just things have just kind of, the wheels have kind of fallen off. And some calls, whether you view it as controversial or not, I'm not so sure they are. But from his perspective, it maybe doesn't have went all against him. Um, some big plays called back. And well, this one's just going to go straight into the end yeah. zone for a touchback. Right. So Whiteford with the ball at their own 20. Hey. But there is a marker down. Yeah, and that official threw that so far up in the air, I think it may have hit that big moon that I saw the other night that was so large. Another dead ball. <laughs> yeah. Personal foul, Whiteford. Boy, they really, they're frustrated yeah. now. Yeah. Uh. They really are, and self-inflicted wounds now is composure is being lost for Whiteford. And now the coaching staff's bringing the kids together. And they're probably, listen, this is a quality program with Whiteford. You don't go to state championships and be 29-3 in the last two, three years if you're not really good. And they're talking about keep your poise. It's right now, the last couple series, it's quite frankly, they haven't. Edgerton has lost. Wayne Trace wins 26 to nothing. Archibald has knocked off Delta tonight, 28 to 24. A little bit of a surprise there. We were everybody buying a lot of Mike Vickers stock, and rightly so. And the Blue Streaks and battled from double digits down yeah. to get the win tonight. Yeah. So that penalty will mean Whiteford starts at their own 10 yard line, the half the distance penalty. Now trailing 43 to 20, still 250 left in the third quarter of play. A toss to Breck Ruddy, trying to get the edge far side, does get the edge, and is going to get about 10 on the carry, or at least close to it. Let's see where they officially bring him down, just shy of the 20, so it's a run of nine, and it'll be second down and one. Second and one, Whiteford at their own 19. Eden 43, Whiteford 20 with 2.43 to go in the third. Always good to hear our friend way out in California, Sean Briner. Listen to locked his alma mater. Locked and loaded. He knows that they're probably 4-0 coming in, yes. right? He's a great guy. Doing well out there in, I think, San Diego. Here's a toss coming back this way to the near side and a quick toss to Antonio Nachtrob. Nachtrop gets across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Holbert up on the stop. And we'll tell Sean he ought to make the trip all the way back and watch these Bombers. This may be, Andy, one of the best, if not the best, Eden team in school history. Am I getting dramatic? Well, they have. they've had some 10-0 yeah. teams. but And they have an, their 11 wins is the high water yeah, mark. I Remember back a few years ago, just three years ago, that team that played them in 2021 and yeah. made that deep run. Yeah, I when get Drew Gallahue was Drew the Gallagher. starting quarterback. So oh, nice run, haven't they? First and ten. Yeah. Whiteford at their own twenty-seven yard line. A run pounded straight ahead with Trent Eitner. Eitner out near the forty yard line. He'll have about well have enough for the first down out near the forty. Picked up seven there. And it'll be first and ten for Whiteford at their own forty. 
Double wing look, one running back on first down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Stumble on the cut that time by Trenton Eitner, trying to turn that corner on a sweep coming around from the right half back going left. And he'll slide down for no gain. It'll be second down and 10. 145 left, quarter number three. And it, white, as we've said, I don't want to be repetitive, but most people when they're on the radio, they, they kind of listen for a little bit and go away and come back. But Whiteford's not geared to score in bunches. Uh, it's, it's a ball control, play action type of offense. So, Foz, you underestimate our audience. 630 hits, they're here until 11. You know what, you're right. Give on the left <laughs> side, Drew Ruddy. Nobody leaves us, Foz. Come on now. <laughs> a sweep to Ruddy. He picks up a yard. And it'll be third down and about nine for the Bobcats as we're down to 116 left in the third. And a 43-20 Eden lead. Third and nine for Whiteford. Bombers had at halftime a 27-14 advantage. So they've been able to extend things here in quarter number three. Third and nine, Whiteford at their own 41 yard line. Trey Eitner under center. Double wing look, one wide receiver, one running back. Man comes in motion, half roll to the right. Now it's a full roll to the right. Trey Eitner sets, fires, throws into coverage. Incomplete. Gallyhu had really good coverage that time on Mason DeBar, and it'll be fourth and nine. Mason DeBar listed at 6'4, Gallyhu about 6'3. There was some contact, but I think both, both parties were just fighting for the ball. And I'm glad to see the official didn't call offense. Didn't, well, it could have been offense or defense. No, I was going to say, it, offense stay out here now on fourth and nine. Yeah, yeah, you, you got it right now. We're at a minute left in the fourth quarter, the style of off, in your in the third quarter, excuse me. And really, you, you know, Whiteford has not stopped Eden. So it, you've got you to get something generated here. Fourth down and nine. Whiteford's offense stays out there. Play clock, though, got to hurry. Two, one. They're not going to get it off. Unless a timeout, and they did get a timeout taken. We're going to stay right here. Timeout on the field. Whiteford with 107 left, quarter number three. It's 43 to 20. Eden with the lead. Next couple of weeks for B Rock. Next week, as we said, it'll be Eden at Montpelier next Friday night here on B Rock 100.9. Two weeks from tonight, a matchup out of the GMC as Edgerton hits the road to what now I think some opinions have changed. Perhaps the GMC favorite in the Paulding Panthers. Paulding Panthers, or how about Fairview? Uh, Fairview and Tenora were in a dog fight. At Fairview, last I heard, prevailed. On is it one? final? Has it gone final? Uh, 28-21 was the last we heard. Fairview leading to Nora. You got a lot of texts. It's 34-28 was a score in yeah. there somewhere. Maybe Ben can get us that score. It's good having Ben Murray. I think Paul Dang. I think Paulding has become the favorite in my eye. Okay. They play the best defense out of all of them. That's that's my I'm not an X factor, but that's my deciding yeah, factor right I, I now. I think I'll go along with you on that. Uh, Paulding and Fairview. Um, get some more data as it comes in. But Fourth and nine. It's going to be competitive in the GMC, though. Unlike sure the NWL, which is everybody's going to run away with it. Yeah, it's over. Attack, Eden's going to run away with it. Well, hold on just a second. <laughs> Ottawa Hills. Flat. Yeah. Incomplete. Well, On fourth and nine, Sap coming up on DeMar. Had coverage, and Whiteford gives it up on downs. Eden will take over, plus territory, up 43 to 20. Now, I'll grant you, Eden, I think, is a favorite going to Ottawa Hills. Mm-hmm. But don't discount the two-time defending champs okay. of the TAC. Fair enough. Had the deepest run they've ever had last year. Got to go to Ottawa Hills on that final Friday night. Yeah. So, Fair enough. First and 10, Eden at the Whiteford 41. And now... You can go for the jugular for e- if you're Eden. Up 43 to 20. Five wide look. Trips to the left. Deuces to the right. Sap steps up in the pocket. Now going to tuck and just get what he can get. Spins forward down at the 37. He'll collect four on the run. Tackle is made by Nolan Walker. It'll be second down coming up. Second and six for Eden just outside the 37-yard line. Down to a half minute to play in the third quarter of football 
one more snap in the third quarter. And Bob Owen is looking at the clock, and he's not in any big hurry. Eden 43, White for 20 here on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Play clock down to 10. Offense breaks the huddle. Two receivers and a wing to the left, two receivers to the right on second down. Sap. Looks, has lots of time, wants the big one, into double coverage, but Ray ball got oh, behind boy. and couldn't bring it in. Trey Eitner may have got a finger on it, possibly. Boy, what a ball. I think that should have been caught. That's one that Max would like to have back. Again, he got behind him. He's such an extraordinary route runner, but Sapp put that right on the money there. Ray ball just couldn't bring it in. It'll bring up third down now with two seconds to play in the third quarter third and seven from the 38 yard line initially it was into double coverage and then Rada ball got separation I'm not sure if Eitner got it if anything it was just a finger may have altered it a little bit but you're right a good ball little screen to the near side Briggle hit and thumped at the 40 yard line Gabe Spiewike and that's how the third quarter comes to an end Eden extending their lead through three. It's the Bombers undefeated, leading two and one Whiteford, Michigan. Eden 43, Whiteford 20. You're listening to week five of high school football on B Rock Sports. Precise Metal Form, 810 Commerce Drive in Bryan, wants to say good luck to the Eden Bombers in tonight's athletic contest. Precise Metal Form is a proud supporter of Eden Bomber Athletics, both boys and girls sports. Precise Metal Form in Bryan, saluting the athletes on all of their hard work and wishing them the best of luck in this athletic contest. Precise Metal Form, 810 Commerce Drive in Bryan, saying go Bombers in the this game. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Starks Plumbing and Heating Services helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Starks Plumbing and Heating Services and see how soon you can get a Lennox home comfort system that'll help improve your health and your mood. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call us today at 1-800-329-4040 or visit us at StarksPHS.com. 43-20, Eden with the lead on Whiteford. Fairview 34, Tenora 28, Rams with a shot. They are threatening late inside of a minute to go in that one. Here it's fourth down and nine. Eden's offense out there at the 38-yard line. Sap wants to throw, looking, got a man wide open. Dickman, 25, 20, 15-yard line. He's buried by Trey Eitner, but it's 25 yards down the field, and the Bombers cash in again on fourth down. I think for me, the hugest, biggest key tonight is there has been no answer from the Whiteford defense for Eden's high-octane 45-a-game offense. Eden has come up with an, a counter move to anything that Whiteford has tried differently. Yeah, well, well said. They've, they've won the zone uh, battle. They've won the man-to-man battle. Uh, they've protected pretty well. Again, Whiteford's only rushing three, but they're winning those individual battles, and Saps, Saps been money all game. Throw into the far side of the field. It is a sliding grab made on that far side, or going to the knees anyways grab, made by uh, Kendall Briggle. He picks up eight on seven on first down. So it'll be second and two. Second and three, officially. Second down and three. Just underway, quarter number four, 43-20. Eden on the Andres O'Neill and low scoreboard. The second down and two to three snap will come from the seven yard line. Bob Owen very patient here, taking as much time as he, he can off the clock. And this Eden offense is really the whole game has just been I think we got our, surgical. And I think we got our question answered about an offense and a team that's only played one complete game with starters. You know, they are fresh tonight. For the end zone, he's wide open again, and Sapp finds Cohen Holbert for the seven-yard TD strike. Boy, there have been a lot of open receivers. In there, this they run. really have. and uh, I can't say it any different than that. They're wide open. He's wide open. Seven-yard TD pass. Oh, 
That's six on the night for Caden Sapp. We need to... Or Kyler Sapp, yeah. What's the school record? Seven. Did I see that? Is it seven? Extra point is on the way, and it is good to make it 50 to 20. I got too many saps around me. I think I saw somewhere in the record seven might be the record. He's got six He's right got now. He's got six right now. Is there anybody that has? That Drew Galhue, I believe, had seven for each. I, I so. think it is the case. We've got ten Anthony, minutes. Anthony Stevens, is seven the school record? We want to maybe check and see. So ten minutes and 29 seconds. and Sap's going to at least get one more series, you would think. Bombers are going to leave here 5 and 0 oh, yeah. and get a signature win on the season. This is going to be their best win. It'll be their first win. I mean, Edgerton, nobody, it was opening week, so yeah. this is the first clear cut win for a team with a winning record. And it's a yeah. really it's, good, that's bad state titles and been in state championship games. This is a quality win tonight for Eden. It sure is. And again, you know, if there were any questions about. Eden, uh, and I, I, I'm not so sure there was many questions. I think we all know they were a very good team. Uh, only really challenged from Edgerton in week one. I think they've been answered tonight. Um, you know, offensively, they're magnificent. <coughs> Defensively, I think they're solid. Still a work in progress, but they're solid. But they've made strides they from have. last year's team. Last year, they absolutely had to outscore everybody. Yeah. And I don't know that they have to outscore everybody this year. Their defense has yeah. improved enough. Now think of it tonight, 20 on the board for Whiteford, and one of them was missed assignments and a busted 73-yard play for the touchdown. So there's only been two drives that Whiteford scored on tonight. And seven? Yeah, but, but, but also eight. 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 Okay, so eight, not seven. And it's but, Drew, right? Drew Galley. Yeah. But also, you know, he's taken away two turnovers. Um, had a, had one, not, not a touchdown, but a, one that was on the one-yard line. One would think, wait, if we were to put called back. Um, listen, there's no question the defense has improved. There's no question. I'm not saying that at all. But um, certainly not at the level of their offense is what no, I'm saying. No, that's but true. It's a good, but it's, a good, it's, 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 a, it's a, an improving, solid defense. Well, here's a marker down out on the cr uh, cross from us on the Whiteford side of the field at near the 40-yard line. We haven't gotten an official call yet, but there was a, well, there was a kick out of bounds, but there's too much discussion, I guess I should add, for a kick that went out of bounds. So I was wondering if there was more to come. Eden has already retreated to the 35 because Whiteford wants them to kick it again. By the way, great to catch up with our old friend Scotty Hewitt. Yeah. He's a super at Whiteford. He came over and said hi at halftime. And what a good person he is. Yeah. Great guy, great administrator. Exchanged some pleasantries about kids and grandkids. And now we have a timeout on the field. I'm going to be as brutally honest as I can right now when I say this. I have no idea... <laughs> why we're placing the ball at the mike and i were in conversation we saw the kick go out of bounds there's been discussions on both sidelines or with both head coaches and now the ball's being placed at midfield so my guess is kick out of bounds whiteford accepted the penalty and maybe eden got a 15 yarder to bring it to the 50. that is just an educated guess because we never saw a signal sweep Coming to the right, the left halfback battles his way down to the 45-yard line. That is Breck Ruddy, who gets five. Wow, I just saw number 53 for Whiteford. Chase Lee. Chase Lee, man. The center just absolutely pancake his defender. Still fighting and competing, and it's a very prideful school. Second and a long five for Whiteford, just outside the 45 of Eden. 940 to play in this one, 50 to 20. Eaton on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard, going to be 5 and 0. Oh. A run for Trenton Eitner. Hulbert just shoving him back, and now other players starting to finish it off. Well, it's a loss of a yard, and it'll be third and six. Todd Teakin and his regime at Whiteford coming in 29 and 3. Bob Olin in his 46th year going to. Uh, 
is yeah. going to be getting to win number 246. And we are now with that score, which Pew and I failed to mention because it's been such a great game. Oh, All yeah. of a sudden, we're at continuous clock. Good call. Yeah, a 30-point game. So 50 to 20 is the score. That's a great call. Yeah. You'd think as the lead play-by-play guy, I'd have looked up and caught that, but I was like, yeah, it's been a good game all night, and you never had a shot well, at it, it, we didn't yeah. think. Yeah, that was asked, will this be a continue? No way, it's going to be competitive. It has been competitive, but just didn't kind of put it on him late here. Drew Ruddy with a run on the far side will collect, I think, the first down to the 40-yard line. He was right there near the sticks, and they do signal first down. Thank Matt Ripke, the uh, Eden AD here, Anthony Stevens. He, I worked with Anthony to get us on, try to get us on the Wi-Fi. Tonight, we always appreciate coming to yeah. you. My first Best trip here tonight. Been, huh? My first trip of the year. You were here in week one. I was here in week one. Yep. Thank and um, Chris Youngie, thanks to Chris for filling good. in. Beautiful. The field looks absolutely immaculate. I know Todd Mulefeld takes great Boy. pride in his crew with that. They really do. As far as surfaces go, Eden Field, and we've seen a lot of football games, is really the best in Northwest Ohio. They take so much pride in that. And Drew Ruddy. We'll come back to that here. Nice play that time by the defensive end. Ruddy got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it as he's getting snaps, and now a flag comes flying in late. The tackle was made that time by Kendall Briggle. Yeah, defensive back Kendall Briggle, but came up and made a nice play. And again, with the continuing clock, this is going to go in a hurry, but they had a, on week one we were here, you were Horse not dollar. here. Horse, Horse dollar. dollar. I think they got that one right. When Kendall came up and made the stop, I think he got him up yeah. around that, in that collar area. If you get anywhere near that and you yank back, and it's a good rule that's been instituted at all levels. Yep. Uh, a little funny story here, as we're a 30-point game right now. At week one, there was a little spot on the field that I didn't even notice. Somebody pointed it out to me, and you had to squint your eyes to see it. But it really bothered the Eden faithful because that spot was on there. It bothered, I guess, Todd Mulefeld. I did not talk to him. It bothered some people. They take such great pride in their football facility, in their football field, that uh, wow, that was a big deal to them. And they got rid of that spot, it looks like to me, because, boy, it's a beautiful surface. 50 to 20, Eden. After the 15-yard horse collar penalty, it'll bring Whiteford down to the 25. Double wing look. Ruddy is the backup quarterback in now. No use in keeping Trey Eitner in there. Sweep to Breck Ruddy. Breck Ruddy off the right side rumbles for about five, and it'll be second and five coming up. So Eden going to be 5-0. and oh. They'll open tack play next week with Montpelier. Whiteford will drop to 2-2. Two and two. Pretty unfamiliar territory for Whiteford football to be sitting at 500 here a month in for their season. That just shows you the standard that has been raised there. Eden again goes, here's the schedule for Eden. At Montpelier, at Northwood, home with Hilltop, home with Richmond Heights, and that's a team that's had to come on to replace Cardinal Stritch as we get a run off the left side to Breck Ruddy. Forward progress gets him three or four. It'll be third and short coming up. And then the showdown in week 10 at Ottawa Hills uh, that on paper would be, as we speak now, for the TAC title. They're going to be heavy, heavy favorites all the way into Ottawa Hills, and I believe they'll be a heavy favorite there. But the next four weeks... Um, it's going to present some different challenges for the Eden coaching staff on how to get your kids focused and geared up when you're going into games that, you know, your huge favorites. Your huge favorites, and uh, that that can be problematic uh, as you get into the playoffs because again that growth is so important throughout the season. Breck Ruddy on third and two, able to battle his way maybe a yard on the play. Either way, it's going to be fourth down and short. One would think, at least not until that Ottawa Hills game, and maybe in that they're. I'm, I'm a little surprised you're underselling Ottawa Hills. They got some kids back. They got their quarterback, Chase yeah. Miller. They got the Pillarellis back. I know they lost some of their line. All those skill kids are pretty much back. Yeah. Perosic was the only one they really lost. Yeah. Yeah. Timeout on the field taken by Whiteford. We'll take uh, probably our final timeout in, in game. 438 left, 50 to 20, Eden. Bombers at the midway point. Going to leave here 5-0. We'll be right back. 
Looking to power up your projects? Head to Donaldson's Ace Hardware on North Union Street in Bryan. Right now, buy a Milwaukee M18 Compact Drill and Impact Driver Kit, Sawzall, Grinder, or a Packout 2.5 Wet Dry Vac, and get a free M18 Red Lithium XC battery. Or go for a DeWalt 20-volt Max Impact Wrench, Jigsaw, Sander, or Ratchet Tool, and snag a free 20-volt Max Power Stack Battery and Charger Starter Kit. The tools you need, the deals you can't miss. Donaldson's Ace Hardware. Ace, the helpful place. Visit us today on North North Union Street in Bryan. By the way, Tenora has a 35-34 lead on Fairview. I don't think, has it gone final? Just went final. Tenora has held on, and after coming back, they hang on and beat Fairview. Big win for the Rams. Remember, they had an 0-3 start on fourth down. Did he get there? I don't think so. I don't either. It was a toss coming around to Breck Ruddy, their leading rusher. Eden's already saying there's no way he got there. And the officials are going to agree. Short of the first down. Bombers get a stop on down. So they forced turnovers tonight, and they forced some stoppages on downs to make this a 50-20 to 20 game. Yep. Yep. Defense has played well in the second half, very well in the second half. And, and, uh, and that, Eden, that's been the difference. And Eden has one punt tonight offensively. Everything else has ended up in the end zone. And that was the second series of the game. Yes. So now on the exchange of possessions, Eden basically should be able to kill the clock in this one. Kyler Sapp going to end up with a six-touchdown performance tonight through the air. Add another on the ground of eight yards as TD passes to Briggle of 17, Radabaugh of 42, Hulbert of 13, Hulbert of 3, Radabaugh of 21, Hulbert of 7 tonight. First down and 10 coming up from the... 16-yard line, and it's a run out across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Pickup of five for Carter Stanky. Boy, if you'd have told me that this game in any way, shape, or form would end in a running clock, I'd say you are bonkers. Yeah, You're nuts. Surprised. But credit goes to Eden tonight, and they gave uh, Whiteford a little taste of their medicine from last year. Whiteford won up there 58 to 18 a season ago and Eden turning the tables tonight up 50 to 20 with two and a half to go Eden will be 5 and 0 oh. Whiteford will drop to 2 and 2 by the way when this game comes to an end we are just going to get you to the post game show since we've run a little deep tonight we're going to give Ben a little air time I know a lot of people leaving games tonight well probably a lot of them have left games already tonight I think we're probably the only ones still uh Left going. It's left going, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a, it really, listen, you're going to see the score. It's 50 to 20. You're going to think, you know, it was not a, it was a competitive game. It was game 27 for, 20 yeah. in deep into the, well, midway through the yeah. third. Yeah. The ability of, I mean, there's a lot of things we could kind of point to here, but the ability of Eden wide receivers to consistently get separation. Um, from the defense defenders from uh, Whiteford, I think, as, as, as was maybe the most glaring thing. Yeah. Andy, would you agree? I would agree. And, and of course, Sap putting it on the money, but boy, they wide open places, and obviously good scheming by the Eden coaching staff and Coach Owen. What was your best one tire and service best play of this game tonight? Anything stand out on any of the touchdown passes or anything? Um, I guess. Oh, on the I think the, the wheel route. Uh, the wheel route to uh, Max Rada ball. Okay. That'll be our best one tire in service. Best play of the game as Eden collects a first down on a fire to the far side of the field. Best one tire with the best costs less inside of the final minute left in this one. Eden starting tack play next week. By the way, our thanks to, to Todd Teakin and Everybody at Whiteford for being gracious. Todd, of course, helping us out, getting ready tonight with coverage. Bob Olin and company always do a great job at Eden and sure make our jobs a lot easier. This should be the last snap of the night as Eden will take this and take a knee and win at Leanne Field tonight in week number five of play. On a six-touchdown pass performance from Kyler Sapp at a seventh on the ground. And again, spreading the wealth to receivers tonight. 
Briggle, Rada Ball, Halbert, all getting TD receptions tonight. Your final from Eden. The Bombers 50, Whiteford 20. For Mike Bum, Andy Briggle saying so long. We'll take a quick break. The Midwest Community Federal Credit Union scoreboard show starts in just a moment. So long, everybody. 